And when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Pentagon on Wednesday stated that a U.S. Navy nurse has refused to participate in force-feeding prisoners who are on hunger strike at the military prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The nurse has reportedly been moved to other duties while the case is under review. There's currently a federal court case seeking the end of the tube feeding, and 16 media organizations have called for a release of videotapes showing inmates being force-fed. The force-feeding came as a response to hunger strike protests that began last summer and grew to 100 participants at one point. A research fish biologist for the U.S. Geological Survey's office in Carneysville, West Virginia, says the practice of coal mining is causing the population of certain species to decline. Clear-cutting trees from mountaintops before blowing off their tops with explosives causes shattered pieces of rocks to enter the area's streams and rivers, subsequently releasing minerals stored within the rock into the water. Researchers say the minerals are changing the water's composition, lowering its quality, and thus killing off a number of fish and insect species. Tuesday afternoon, the Shasta County Board of Supervisors in Shasta County, California, unanimously voted to investigate geoengineering. Over 100 concerned citizens and researchers filled the meeting to present information on the dangers of solar radiation management, a type of geoengineering which involves spraying aerosols from planes to combat global warming. A video presentation and documentation will be forwarded to state and federal agencies related to air quality, transportation, Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the Nosebuds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a... Really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about whatever you'd like to discuss. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Of course, lots of stuff to talk about here tonight, um, including some not so great news from the world of Bitcoin, at least in New York State, which of course the one of the least free places in the United States. Uh, there, not some good news. Uh, we'll give you that coming up here in a moment. With you in the studio tonight, in here, Dan Johnson and Mark. All right. So, uh, and and then Johnson, you've got a disturbing story about a young boy who uh, was 12 years old i guess he's not 12 anymore no no definitely Um, he's not 12 anymore he's almost 30 i think at some point uh he did something when he was 12 that has gotten him placed on the sex offender registry and we'll talk about that the toll-free number here tonight is 855 450 free plus a woman has a brown lawn and that is a problem in (laughs) some places in the so-called land of the free Uh, So all kinds of interesting things here. Your calls are, of course, primary if you make them at 855-450-FREE. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's start with the Bitcoin news from Business Insider. The New York Department of Financial Services has released a draft for what the state's bit licenses will look like. And they're going to change the face of digital currency commerce in the United States. Now, before we go on, uh, Johnson, what is a Bitcoin? Uh, it is a digital cryptocurrency. So uh, it is uh, an analogy uh, would be closest to being like a gold or a silver coin that you can trade online in the same way that you could send money via something like PayPal. That's how I would, I think, be break it down in the most simple fashion right. possible. It's like gold because it can't be inflated or um, deflated, for that matter, by, by a government agency. A government can't right. print 
Bitcoin into existence. It works like a existence. commodity. Yeah. It works like a commodity, unlike fiat currencies. Um, however, it is tradable instantly online in much in the same way, uh, you know, PayPal is. Right. And Bitcoins are, uh, you know, kind of taken over the world slowly. I mean, there's more companies now that are accepting Bitcoins than, uh, than ever before. Newer, bigger companies are coming on, like yep. uh, Rocketin over in Japan. That's a new announcement. Hustler.com now taking Bitcoin. If there's a Bitcoin, um, bubble, a Bitcoin bubble, it continues to blow bigger and bigger. I think that it's just actually going to take over because it's just a better form of, uh, of currency. Yeah, so um, as the Bitcoin becomes more influential, as more people begin accepting it, of course, the state begins to circle around as though it were a shark in uh, bloody chummed waters looking to strike at anyone who might happen to have a few Bitcoins because, well, that's what the state does. They don't want you to go out there and spend your money without them getting a cut of it. That's what sales tax is all about. Uh, for instance, there's an anytime business is being done. The state wants to be an intermediary, provide no service whatsoever, and then take a cut off the top just because they'll hurt you if you don't do what they say. And so now they're uh, bringing in New York State, also known as the Empire State, they're bringing forth bit licenses. Now, I don't know if that's what the New York State's going to call it. That's what they're calling it at Business Insider, some sort of a uh, government approval process for doing Bitcoin business. The greatest change, uh, according to the story here, is that anyone using a New York-sanctioned Bitcoin or cryptocurrency service will no longer be anonymous. This was something Bitcoin's earliest users said was a key ingredient to the digital currency's appeal but which DFS, the Department of Financial Services in New York, as well as other lawmakers, expressed a strong distaste for at hearings earlier this year. Now, any business whose essential service is buying, selling, or processing bitcoins will have to maintain records of their customers' names and addresses and check them against the Treasury's list of bad actors. The businesses will also have to maintain reserve bitcoin assets equal to 100% of however much they are holding on behalf of customers. Now, reserve Bitcoin assets of 100%, does that mean that they ha they would have to have twice as much no. in Bitcoin? If a bank is holding a Bitcoin for you, mm -hmm. the bank must hold that Bitcoin. Oh, I see. See, what banks do currently is, is they hold, I think it's... Something Fractions. like yeah, it's it's some fraction, and it might be nine percent or eleven percent or some number like that, of the amount of dollars that are deposited with them, um, and they actually don't even hold that on site. Mm. If you want to be terrified about the American banking system, just look up fractional reserve banking on YouTube. Oh yeah, it's and just watch some videos and and pretty be crazy. completely disturbed. So apparently they'll, uh, let's see, so they're going to have to hold this 100%. They have to get bonded up in such form and amount as is acceptable to DFS for the protection of the licensee's customers. And they'll have to submit and publish a detailed consumer complaint policy that must include a provision allowing customers to pursue their complaint with the Department of Financial Services. Finally, DFS will be conducting security audits on any firms with a bit license to prevent another MT Gox type hack from occurring. Because that's right, the, uh, the government will certainly protect your Bitcoins for you. You can count on them. Oh, wait, mm, there's no guarantees that they're going to be able to prevent any of those things from happening. Uh, but they certainly are going to take some money off the top here. The former exchange, one of the world's largest, lost hundreds of millions of dollars over security issues. This is like to raise the cost of compliance considerably and could eliminate some of the cost efficiencies that were also touted as key to Bitcoin's advantage over traditional forms of transaction. And the draft proposal makes New York the first government entity to propose comprehensive Bitcoin regulations and are likely to serve as a model for other states and even federal guidelines, given New York's role as the vanguard financial authority outside of D.C. I think that's absolutely true that New York, this, this is the thing that I considered when I saw it, that New York is the, um, and I would say even beyond Washington, D.C., the, vi vi uh, the vanguard financial leader or whatever it is, the terminology they used, the New York Federal Reserve is a basically the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, there are other sort of other Federal Reserves around the United States, but it's the New York Federal Reserve that sets the temperature and makes sure that, you know, the policy is that what it, the policy is. So I think this is very important. And of course, the, well, I think it's a terrible I mean, this is terrible I, news. This, I, I didn't say that important does not. Okay, uh, is you weren't a value judgment. You weren't other than this was good then. Okay, gotcha. 
Well, there are. I think it's inevitable. Okay, I do think that if Bitcoin is going to move into the more mainstream, that uh, the government's going to lay down guidelines, and some businesses are going to go by those guidelines, and some of them aren't. Bitcoin is very much like a cash business, uh, cash transaction, mm -hmm. and the government's going to have a difficult time, especially with alt currencies running around there, because if you for instance, you want to do some business with Bitcoin. Maybe you can, uh, you know, wash your Bitcoins and nobody will know that they're necessarily yours. Uh, Blockchain.info has a service like that. And there are other services, Bitcoin washing services. Or you can transfer them into some altcoin like Dogecoin or uh, Litecoin or whatever. And then transfer them back into Bitcoins with other Bitcoins. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's going to be darn difficult for them to really enforce this well that's why well that's why they're targeting the big businesses yes right? they're targeting the the bitcoin exchanges so any of them that are operating in new york state will be subjected to this they do say here a business insider that you will not need a license if you're just a retailer accepting bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as a form of payment and uh, unfortunately of course within the bitcoin community there are there's kind of two sides in the bitcoin community maybe there's three i don't know but there's at least two that i know of one side is desperately seeking regulation. They, uh, they embrace this. They love this. They want this because it makes them feel legitimate. And, of course, you know, the more the government gets in with regulations, the more the first entries into the Bitcoin market will be protected from competition. So it's likely people like uh, the Winklevoss twins or Winklevoss, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, who are seeking to launch a Bitcoin ETF. I don't know what that stands for. Exchange ETF. Exchange Traded Fund. Uh, they told in a uh, Business Insider in a statement, quote, We are pleased that Superintendent Lossky and the Department of Financial Services have embraced Bitcoin and digital assets and created a regulatory framework that protects consumers. We look forward to New York State becoming the hub of this exciting new technology. So, um... I guess you, you were saying there's two camps, and I would say that— The other camp is the one that wants freedom. The, the, well, it, it, he wants less tracking on Bitcoin transactions. Um, I'm in the camp that says, I do want this regulation because in the absence of this regulation, what you will have is a clampdown on Bitcoin. I want the regulation because Bitcoin's impossible to regulate. I want you to try— So you feel like it's more of an illusion of regulation? I, I, in a lot of ways, I do. Now, if, for instance, you were Yeah, to but it's going to result in people like on the uh, the website Local Bitcoins. I was just talking with somebody about this today, just out, out on the porch, actually, uh, that Local Bitcoins allows anybody anywhere to buy things, which I think is a silly name. Apparently, anyone anywhere can buy from anybody on Local Bitcoins d due to some sort of escrow service and people— oh, um, you know, people depositing money or whatever. Okay. Actually, we'll come back with more here in moments. Two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. So in, Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two -week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Speaking of money, really? 16th, 2014, gold opened at 1303.10. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1350.43, 675.22 for a half ounce, or 337.61 for a quarter ounce. That's 1350.43, 675.22, Hello. and 337.61. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237.
Hewlett Packard is known for their basic, no frills computers, but that doesn't mean they can't keep up with the latest technology. In a press release yesterday, HP said, quote, We are excited to begin offering that cloud thing that everyone is talking about. We definitely have the cloud on our computers, and it is better than anyone else's cloud. Earlier today, I sat down with HP spokesman Gary Klinman, who said the company couldn't wait to show people, quote, how they do their cloud stuff. We are absolutely thrilled that uh, now uh, people with computers or, or, or phones, both, both, uh, will now be able to um, back things up to the cloud. Clinton says it isn't surprising they're, quote, up on the cloud, considering they're on the cutting edge of all the latest tech trends. Are there any additional features? Crowdsourcing is something we are having. Crowdsourcing 2.0. We have uh, uh, social sharing. We have 5G, 6G, really all the Gs. We have app. We have all of it in the computer. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here. Right here. Toll free. Toll free. And uh, board up. I am getting some talk back, by the way. That was the problem in the last segment. I'm, that's why we missed our break when we were going out. So I apologize for the technical difficulties as uh, we've been kind of ironing things out behind the scenes. There have been some issues with the cable modem here. Um, so apologize for that. Anyway, toll free number 855 450 free. We've got Skype as well. Uh, you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, we're talking about some disturbing news from the Bitcoin world. Uh, Bitcoin, well, no, not Bitcoin, Business Insider, businessinsider.com, and I'm sure this is all over the Bitcoin news world as well. Yeah, there's a few articles about this. Um, about how the Department of Financial Services has now released a draft for what will be called bit licenses, or at least that's what Business Insider is calling them. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but they're going to be licensing and regulating businesses who do business with exchanging Bitcoins uh, for people for the most part. And so they're saying that if you're just a business that but accepts Bitcoins. in New York, Bitcoins, right? In New York. They're saying if you're a business that accepts Bitcoins, that it won't apply to you. But if you are somebody who's, for instance, doing exchanging of Bitcoins, then you could be in some pretty difficult uh, situation, in a pretty difficult situation here because uh, they're going to want a obedience from you. They're going to probably want some kind of money out of you as well. Who knows what these licenses are going to cost? But the what this license does is essentially make it impossible for businesses in New York to compete against Bitcoin uh, exchanges around the world. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, all well, that makes it more difficult. I mean, what? so the the main exchanges, most of them I don't think really exist in the United States. I don't think that uh, oh, really? Coinbase is even would really even be considered an exchange, but I suppose you could call that. Certainly they're very big. But BTCE is out of uh, Russia. And you're going to be driving people to that. Now, I have heard that people have gotten their money out of BTCE, like, you know, exchanged money and gotten real money out of there. I would have, as an American, I would probably be more comfortable doing business with a company in the United States. I'm not exactly sure why, except that maybe I would have, um, you know, more recourse through the courts if they went under or did something like that. But frankly, the courts are terrible. terrible. Um, uh, organizations to handle disputes they're awful anybody who's had a dispute tries to avoid court as best they possibly can really um, when it comes to an exchange the best thing is uh, you know the, 
uh, the credit rating essentially of uh, the people that use it. What do they? What do? What do you believe about that exchange? What do people believe? And if a, and if an exchange gets a bad rep. People are going to stop using it right straight away. Well, the good news is ExpressCoin is not based in New York. Aren't they out of Washington State? I think so. I think they may have moved the offices down to California. but Either way, not in New York, and uh, they are still the best choice for buying your Bitcoins or even Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. You can go to uh, ExpressCoin.com. You can grab their smartphone app or just work it on their website where you can send them uh, money order, check, or wire transfer. You can also do cash deposits at uh, Shared Branching Credit Union. The credit union does have to have shared branching, but there are a lot of them that do. And so you can take cash right on in there, and then after like a business day, you'll get some Bitcoin. Just go to ExpressCoin.com. They make it easy, and they are really concerned with customer service. They're going to help you out. ExpressCoin.com. So I think this is, you know, I guess I get what you're saying, Mark, that the Bitcoin... It's inevitable that the state's going to crack down on it. And I meant to mention about ExpressCoin, Ian. I forgot to mention this while you were, you were talking about it. They're going to have uh, no transaction fees tomorrow. And they're hey, going to randomly right. do one month, one day every month, no transaction fees. How do fees. you find out what it is? It's random. <laughs> you got to. So you just have to go to the site. You got to pay. You got to pay attention to the site gotcha. and, and that kind of thing. But that's a pretty big deal. Um, you know, no fees at all. And that's it's not the, awesome. It's not the cap that they used to have. Remember, they used to have like one day a week where they would do a certain amount. If so, if you got in under the ten thousand dollar cap, then you would uh, have no fees. Yeah. This is no cap all day. All day long, no fees at yep. ExpressCoin.com. Tomorrow, that's Friday the eighteenth. That's correct. Got it. That is super cool. So, uh, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts certainly welcome on the Bitcoin regulations here. I mean, Mark, you're saying you reluctantly welcome them because you feel like it's going to more well, legitimize—I'm just trying to understand what you yeah. were saying—that you feel like it's going to more legitimize Bitcoin, make more companies feel like they can accept it, while at the same time actually doing nothing to really— uh, stop anything that would be nefarious about Bitcoin, like somebody buying drugs online with it or something like right. that. Right. I really don't think this matters in the world of doing uh, business in Bitcoin. All this does is drive business out of Bitcoin business out, out of, of New York, York State. But and, what if yeah. other states start to pick this up? Right, what if they exactly. take this as boilerplate regulation and they my, adopt it? You, my question is how long before the regulatory burden drives up the transactional fees to 2.8%? <laughs> oh, man. I don't think it will. And the reason is, is that what you will see is you will see countries, uh, you know, small countries, which have little to offer the world except, uh, you know, beaches, perhaps, <laughs> <laughs> cholera, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin transactions. People will be driven to this because you'll have the situation where you can have that Cayman Island account mm -hmm. without having to be wealthy and knowledgeable. Or you even go to the Cayman Islands. We have a very very good Nigerian prince. We are going to give him <laughs> many Bitcoin transactions. Right. Well, I mean, you know, and that's the thing is, is a, whatever that country is that ends up being the Bitcoin capital of the world, they do have to offer security. And they're going to probably offer some <laughs> level of regulation. You, you know, will simply s send us $500,000. We will send you your Bitcoin right away. <laughs> By the way, we're on in Nigeria, I just yes. like to say. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to all of Welcome our Nigerian, to all you Nigerian scammers. <laughs> well, you know what? I, what Isn't Nigerians, that what everyone does for a living over there? Like, it's just like no. every job in the country. I'll bet you the Nigerians <laughs> don't have any clue. Is operating a phone bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet the Nigerians have no clue that most of the things that the people from the United States believe come out of Nigeria <laughs> scams. So the fact is, Nigerians. Um, yes, if you if you send email from Nigeria, just know if you're sending any email from Nigeria to America, we automatically are suspicious of what you. I have don't to think say we get it. I suspect a small percentage of your country. I suspect the email um, company is probably just sending it straight to spam, spam. anyway. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, what in the United States. A lot of Nigerian uh, people will send emails here trying to get people to open up their bank right. accounts for them and, and a variety of other scams. So, you know, sorry about that, Nigerians, but there's some of your countrymen are making it tough on you. So uh, back to the discussion we were having about Bitcoin regulations. Um, you know, the, the concern, I think, is that they're going to be putting these into place in more states. And the article even suggests that that may be what happens. In fact, it suggests it that even the feds may take on this as boilerplate. I think that so, that's very likely, Ian. 
the fact we is already the United know there's States, regulations. The United States federal government and the state governments have done a fine job of driving business out of this country for decades. Well, okay. They're not going to stop today. No, I get, I get that. I just I think people need to be aware this is happening, and that's why we're talking about it. Yep. But I think there is the possibility here that, okay, politics takes a long time. The system is slow. Bitcoin's been around for years. Now New York still, this is a draft of the regulations. So the, the regulations themselves are not yet in place, but over time they will be. And over time, more states may pick this up. But New Hampshire, where we live, where we've moved to as part of the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to one place to get active for freedom here, where people have actually been winning elections to office, this may well, be the place people, where... People, liberty-oriented people have been... Everybody's been... In I'm every, sorry, did it, I not make that clear? Yeah. Free State Project is to bring liberty-oriented people to New Hampshire so we can make a stand for freedom, and people are already winning Wouldn't elections. Wouldn't that be awesome for New Hampshire, Ian? I mean, I, I didn't really think of this, but you're exactly right. This is the solution to the problem, is that if a... St- State, if, if New Hampshire can essentially... Damn it, we ran in the break again. I apologize. Herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the <laughs> web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society 
with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and due to more operator incompetence, that is me, uh, we ran right into that other break. So apologies to anyone who's a la- listening on the radio and wondering why we're so uh, rudely just talking right well, into the break. It's not just incompetence. I mean, you're kind of having some trouble no, with No, that the- was incompetence. I had pulled down uh, one of the sliders on the board, and I forgot to put it back up. So okay. that's <laughs> But that's you were getting talk back, right? Yeah, we were. And thankfully, we're not now. That's which- good. Which is where we hear Should ourselves. Should be fixed. It's where we hear ourselves back. That's not happening now. Anybody so. who's uh, had a cell phone, um, yeah. talked on a cell phone for any length of time has had this at some point or another happen where it's just like your voice is coming back to you about a second later. It's impossible oh, to you think. You can't think. Yeah, no doubt about it. Do you know it. they actually have done scientific experiments with uh, that and people who stutter and that if there's a certain delay at certain speed with which if you hear your voice back to yourself you will gain a stutter if you're a normal person <laughs> you will gain a stutter and you uh, will not yeah. be able to think and like to a certain point you get to, you start to shut down you yeah. can't just talk at all and what's interesting is that actually the reverse is, is true in people that do have a stutter that if they can just shift it very slightly they can actually in some people that have a stutter they can cure the stutter by offsetting hmm. the voice and if these people wear uh, headphones and they hear their own voice back at a certain delay they goes away it would be more effective you remember the harrison bergeron short story yeah, by yeah. Uh, uh, kurt vonnegut where this guy had to wear headphones that would play like you know Handicaps. a random yeah a, they, he had a random he was too smart and they wanted the world to be completely fair hmm. so um they would play sort of a random loud noise back every couple of every random sort of randomized seconds in order for him to not be able to put a real to coherent together, thought together. Off. I got yeah. you. But that would be far more effective because yeah. you'd, you'd never be able to, to, especially for an extrovert, you'd never be able to talk and come up with something yeah. if you just had talkback constantly Ugh. coming in your ears. Okay, so we're going to continue the discussion about Bitcoin. We'll also get to your calls here. 855-450-FREE. I also want to re- let you know about modup.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued, You want that extra edge when it counts? Go check out Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, as well as fighting off fatigue and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. It's affordable through modup.net for everybody to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85 percent lower priced than the brand name drug but don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality they ensure over at modup.net that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version so check out modup.net and remember that free talk live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide it's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply and modup.net by the way offers you a bitcoin discount if you pay with bitcoin you'll get 33 percent off and to make the deal even better use code ftl and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order so don't forget code ftl at modup m-o-d-u-p dot net as we go to Dan in Pittsburgh, New York State's looking to regulate Bitcoin exchanges. Dan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Johnson and Mark. Uh, hey, how's it going? Hey, Dan. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. So, yeah, I had kind of two things. First of all, I just wanted to offer some comments on the uh, regulation. Um, I mean, I, I host a Bitcoin podcast, so I know a little bit about these things, and that's Actually, you know, almost every time we have a guest who runs a, like a, a Bitcoin project or something, we always ask him, you know, are you are you worried about regulation? Do you think it'll be a bad thing? Will it hurt you? Uh, and so I, I don't know. I just wanted to say in general, it seems like most people, especially in the U.S., they they tend to go along with the regulations or just accept the regulations. Uh, with Bitcoin and just general money regulation, mm-hmm. um, just because they, it's easier to get easier to get along, easier to do business that way, uh, and that's yeah, prison's you know, scary. Okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it's easier than prison. Right. Absolutely. Um, and and I think this is kind of the stuff you already said, but you know, just to reiterate, Bitcoin is it is really cool in that it can't really be regulated. Uh, other than just getting into the minds of the people, you can't 
control it. Uh, and that's kind of cool. So it's almost like, you know, anywhere where regulation might be good or might be helpful, you know, then people can can follow the regulation and, and do what the government wants. But if there's anywhere where the regulation is clearly bad and clearly do it having negative effects, it's it's also people can ignore the regulation too if they wanted to. And and so that's just I guess a really good thing about Bitcoin is they can if they can do what whichever is better for them. They can obey the regulation or or they can't. So that's, if you don't obey the regulations in New York, you might go to prison. I mean, that's if you run a an exchange, right? So right. that's where it's starting. They're cracking down on the exchanges. I yeah, that's they're running true. exchanges out of business. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true because um, I guess yeah, I guess I was saying you can. It's your choice to not follow the regulation, and that's true kind of in a general way with Bitcoin. But you're right if you're operating like a public business like an open business, then yeah, it's it's a lot harder to not follow the regulations because then people can know about it or see it. But yeah, uh, so that that is definitely true. And that, I guess, is certainly a bad thing. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's bad. I don't I guess, think it's Bitcoin's fault. It's just, no, it's certainly not Bitcoin's fault. And Bitcoin can do nothing about it either. So uh, right. Bitcoin will go right. on likely... You know, in spite of all these regulatory hoops that the government agents are wanting to put up and we'll likely see more of beyond New York. Dan, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So what I was saying as we went to the last break, I kind of got a little bit into it, so I'm going to reverse just to make sure everyone was able to hear the topic, was talking about New Hampshire. Because um, the idea is, is these new New York regulations that are being just now being proposed, it's a draft, uh, that once they go into effect, other states may look to that. They may just t- copy and paste and add them to their regulatory uh, procedure. So my suggestion here is that New, new Hampshire is already a, kind of a hotbed for, for Bitcoin. The it's Liberty- probably uh, per capita more Bitcoin transactions going on in the geopolitical area known as New Hampshire than other any other geopolitical area on the planet. I don't know about that. I mean, that's a really pretty big where? claim. Where? Are you talking about human to human, or are you talking about, like, anybody? Are you talking about in internal New Hampshire to New Hampshire transactions, yes. or are you talking about New Hampshire to anywhere uh, transactions? I suspect that uh, those things are both true, unless you count things like... Um, robots trading robots on bitcoin exchanges um that you know human beings doing business mm-hmm. either in in intra or interstate from new hampshire is higher than it is from is any that based other, on speculation you know, it's speculation something yep. dawns on me that's kind of interesting but, about bitcoin just real quick i mean it's just one thing that's really interesting about bitcoin is that the regulators who are making laws about bitcoin right they're typically not Bitcoin users Probably not. for the most part. And what's really interesting is that unlike any other currency ever in history, Bitcoin tends to be used primarily by liberty-oriented folk. And what dawns on me about that is that's just so strange. I mean, you can't think back and be like, oh, yeah, gold is, is a history of only being used by liberty lovers. Like, it, no, gold was used by all people alike. There's not really been a currency where it's like been like people who care about freedom use this money. Yeah, that's that's certainly different. Although I would be interested to see the breakdown of both of these things, right? Like yeah. what percentage of Bitcoin users actually understands the ideas of liberty? I imagine it's a right. much higher percentage than the, you know, right. the cash users out there. That's probably true. Um, but I don't know what the, the, the percentage is, it's and just, I don't know what the percentage is of people within well, New Hampshire the reason using why this, Bitcoin. The reason why this thought jumped in my head is when I think that when it comes down to New Hampshire as maybe setting an example for the rest of the country in terms of regulatory action on Bitcoin, you think that the Bitcoin activists here, which there are going to be many, when it comes down to regulations being enacted, the Bitcoin activists who are going to be generally freedom-oriented people, especially in New Hampshire, are going to mm-hmm. rush to deal with the situation. That's what I was saying. Here is the place, New Hampshire is the place, because we already have a huge community of activists here that's growing by the day. We just moved a new couple in here in Keene this afternoon. Right. Um, you know, it seems like a nice nice group of folks. Anyway, these, uh, these people are going to go to the 
the state legislation state legislature and they're going to lobby against bitcoin regulations here that's going to well, happen here it's not happening in new york state there's going to be regulations the question is how is it written because i putting... bet we can stop them all in new hampshire more coming up here in moments 855 450 free unless of course the agency can just write their own regulations here in new hampshire in which case we wouldn't be able to stop that but there might be a way to prohibit that there's more on the way you can take control it's free talk live Incorporation, protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760 that's 800 952 5760 800 952 5760 Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM.
Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Will New Hampshire become a haven for Bitcoin businesses and exchanges in the future? Or is that just pie-in-the-sky dreaming? Will it not matter because the federal government will ultimately crack down on uh, the Bitcoin exchanges? What we're seeing happening now is New York State getting ready to put into place regulations controlling uh, people that are doing business in exchanging bitcoins, not not people accepting bitcoins for payment, but people who are exchanging bitcoins for cash, for instance, uh, in New York, business might get a lot more difficult very soon. And of course, the concern on my part is that we're going to see more of this all around the country. Your uh, thoughts are welcome here. You can join us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, where we actually have Uber George on the line from China. Or where are you actually, George? I'm back in the States right uh, there. I just wanted to um, well, expound uh, what ended up happening with um, Pro XPN, how I managed to beat it was um, when, I, when I would try well, to hold log on. Hold on. on. Let's recap a, a little bit here. You had called in previously from China and you were using Pro XPN's uh, service and attempting to get around the Chinese internet blocks. Um, which apparently yeah. chi Chinese uh, internet blocks have gotten a lot more severe within the last year. They've now started targeting anyone with a VPN connection and just shutting down VPN connections in certain cities in China. Now, apparently, I actually emailed uh, ProXPN about this, and they sent me back a response, which I believe we read on the air. But anyway, the short version of it was that in some areas of China, like the big cities, this crackdown is more apparent. In the not-so-big areas of China, you can't find it. Apparently, you can have a VPN in the less populated areas, and nobody's really picking those off. But you were actually at your hotel on your VPN, and you'd gotten around some of the blocks with the, with the help from ProXPN's text, but they managed to target you and take you out. That was the last we'd heard. Uh, they, they can somehow identify the VPN ports being used, and then they just shut them down. So uh, what what did you learn? Because you know the the folks over at ProXPN said they said they have been working on the uh, the issue. Well, what I did was at the second I would uh, it would connect, I would automatically try to download a large file, like say an episode of Free Talk Live, in which doing that, um, I, I'd say six to seven times out of ten would work to keep the VPN open in spite of them trying to shut it down hmm. for some reason. It's, it's, yeah, it, it I don't know why. But just down, the constant downloading kind of managed to get past it where even the computer would say I was disconnected, but I was still connected. And when that happened, I was able to um, stay online like that and, and watch some shows most of the time. It didn't work all the time, but I'd say about six to seven times out of ten it worked where I could just, right. you know, if it, was, if it was downloading a large file, it would get, for some reason, it, that would defeat their trying to um, cut it off. Well, I'm sure that over time the uh, VPN services like ProXPN will come up with more creative ways to bypass the Chinese censors. I'm glad to hear that you figured out a way, uh, George. And you had told us that you were really happy with ProXPN and that, that it works oh, yeah. in almost every other every other country you've been to. It's been no problem to get around uh, the restrictions and that their tech support staff was really helpful with you. Yeah. and Oh, and also I wanted to... Um Mention, address something you guys were talking about TSA yesterday with the whole um, flying without ID. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, that? What's the deal with that? Because you used to work for the TSA up until about a year ago. Um, what, uh, what February, was February, actually. February, okay. <laughs> what was, yeah, uh, yeah. So what was the procedure if somebody didn't have ID? Well, uh, basically it was the same since I left right there because this guy, when I was in Chicago, come, um, on connecting, coming back home, this guy like just um, was like robbed, lost his wallet the night before. So basically, all, all you had to do is just um, tell them who you are, give them your social security number. Uh -huh. Also, if you don't have a license, like uh, I know one guy um, who lost his license because of a DUI, so his only ID, he didn't have really any ID at the, at the time, and he was flying, and they just was he sober? Card. Oh, he was sober then. Okay. Now, I, now you you might remember the show, uh, George, when we had Sam Dodson on with us. He was saying he was flying with with no ID, and I didn't get the impression he was giving them social security numbers. But that was probably four years ago, or you know, three or four years ago. So, was it possible previously to fly even without giving a social security number, or was you know was that something that was always in place and we just weren't aware of it? 
I think it's probably all, always in place. But, you know, if you had anything with your name on it, they'd accept it, like a Costco membership card. I don't think you, you could probably get away without even giving them your Social Security number. If you have a Costco right. card, for example, with your picture on it, they'll take that. And then, hmm. but you still get that blue glove of love, of sweet love, you know? Yeah. What would happen if I didn't have anything? If I was just, you know, if I just showed up, I've got no, I don't know my social security number. I don't have any identification, but I'm this guy on this ticket. Now, what are you going to do? Uh, probably, well, they would just run like a background check, ask you a series of questions, you know, hmm. like. Um, what if he refused to, gotta, what if he refuses to answer them, though? You know, like, that would probably be up to the discretion of the supervisor at that point, you know. Yeah, really, if the supervisor being a, you know, D-I-C-K, then, you know, you, you might be S-O-L. Gotcha. Right there. George, thanks for the call tonight, man. Appreciate hearing from you. Don't a- spell a- any more cuss words. Well, <laughs> the D word you can kind of get away with, I think, most most yeah. cases. There's certainly Unless you're using some, it in a sexual connotation. There is some boss out there named Richard, there's no doubt. Toll-free number is 855-453. You, That's- you know, you mentioned sending send out some fly, flying and not have, carrying ID and whatnot. And I was just, the first thing that I thought that came to mind was that, you know, they probably don't require ID on the spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you can uh, you can bring up whatever you want here. We were talking about ProXPN. I want to let you know about them. ProXPN.com slash They sponsor FTL. our phone lines. They do sponsor the phone lines here, and they're a great uh, global virtual private network that encrypts your data, meaning that before it reaches your internet service provider, before it reaches the Chinese government servers, whatever, it's encrypted. It makes it more, much more difficult for somebody to figure out what you're doing online. So they can protect you, and you, get, you can get it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices, plus Linux users. Setup's a little different for you, but you can make it work there as well. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab their software, get started. You can do it for free, and then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for just 5 bucks a month, use our discount code to get that deal. It's FTL20. That gets you 20% off the price of the premium account and if you buy the annual plan you get five bucks a month that's what the price breaks down to so uh, go to proxpn.com slash ftl and uh, take advantage of this it's a great deal in fact again you can start for free there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee with the premium package and with their premium account you get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world to which you can connect and the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites in almost all of the world except for some parts of china where things are a little more challenging there's they are working on that and uh, I trust in the geeks. I imagine there will be a solution at some point to the Chinese government targeting uh, virtual private networks like this. ProXPN.com slash FTL, promo code FTL20. You know, one of the things that's really cool about ProXPN is, you know, if you go to a school or you go to a workplace, odds are good they're going to be able to get you right around any blocks that you might have on those locations. It's no problem. ProXPN.com slash FTL. But go try it out for free and see if it works where you are. Or where you're going to visit. Maybe you're going on vacation, business, you're going to be going to one of those questionable countries. Give it a shot. See how it works. All right, so we'll continue here. We've been talking about Bitcoin, but there's a lot more in the news, including a disturbing story about a man who did something at age 12 uh, with his sister, apparently, and that has gotten him on a sex offender registry. Johnson has that story. Plenty of time for your calls and your thoughts. New York is looking at regulating Bitcoin providers, Bitcoin exchanges, people that are providing the service of exchanging cash or something else into Bitcoin and vice versa. And there are individuals who do this. I mean, obviously, ExpressCoin.com, that's a great way to go and get Bitcoin. But there are individuals who do this as well. And I'm, I'm concerned this is going to result in even more of a crackdown on these guys. Uh, because the, these regulations are going to, to, to put, on, you know, put a burden on existing businesses, which you know, maybe, sure. maybe they'll have the infrastructure to be able to handle those regulations. But the average guy who's just trying to make a little bit of extra money uh, selling some Bitcoin online, and uh, to be fair, apparently some people are actually making a living at doing this, but I imagine some people are supplementing their income with exchanging Bitcoins for people while others are doing it more full-time. All of these people will likely become subject to the new New York regulations, and it's probably going to either put them out of business or once they uh, you know, get caught, it's going to put them in a prison cell. And I think that's going to be the real detriment to this. That a lot, you, you're, What you're saying is, Mark, it's going to drive people out of New York. And that's true. The businesses will probably move out of New York. But the average person who's providing Bitcoin exchange services, they're going to be screwed unless they want to leave, too. Well, you were saying that you hope that a another state like New Hampshire or some other state um, really... 
you know, didn't do any regulation of Bitcoin at all. Yeah, it becomes a haven. Become, well, I hope that that's true, but I think that it would be otherwise, and here's why. Because if, um, if the regulation's coming down, New York's first, there may be another state or two that's before the federal government, mm -hmm. but the federal government's going to come down on this too, and they're going yeah. to lay out um, regulations. So a state either has to nullify the regulation, right. the U.S. regulations with their own regulations, or they, um, they have to comply. We'll find out what happens and bring it to you here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Hour 2 is on the way. 855-450 free. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn. And you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,301 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $608. Antiwar.com reports, in addition to the growing death tolls among Ukraine's combatants, both military and rebel, the ongoing eastern conflict is taking a growing toll among civilians as the fighting increasingly relies on artillery. Both sides are armed with aging Soviet-era artillery, and with the fighting taking place largely in cities, the inaccurate nature is putting a lot of civilians in harm's way. At least 30 more civilians were reported killed yesterday, mostly in shellings, particularly in cities which look to be open-ended battlegrounds like Luhansk. Tens of thousands of civilians have fled either westward into Ukraine or eastward into Russia, which is accepting many ethnic Russian refugees from the area. Both sides were quick to blame the other for the civilian deaths, and Ukrainian officials are likely throwing in claims of Russian involvement for good measure, but both seem to be using artillery in equally risky manners, leading to growing international calls to stop relying so heavily on indiscriminate shelling. The deaths are in addition to 11 people killed in an airstrike against an apartment block earlier this week. The rebels who control the city reported the strike was carried out by a Ukrainian warplane. Ukraine insisted the attack was carried out by some unknown warplane that just happened to be meandering around the Donetsk Oblast. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. 
The LA Times reports a federal judge ruled Wednesday that California's death penalty violates the U.S. Constitution's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. U.S. District Judge Cormac J. Carney ruled on a petition by death row inmate Ernest Dwayne Jones, who was sentenced to die nearly two decades ago. Carney said the state's death penalty has created long delays and uncertainty for inmates, most of whom will never actually be executed. He noted that more than 900 people have been sentenced to death in California since 1978, but only 13 have actually been executed. Carney wrote, For the rest, the dysfunctional administration of California's death penalty system has resulted and will continue to result in an inordinate and unpredictable period of delay preceding their actual execution. Carney said the delays have created a system in which arbitrary factors, rather than legitimate ones like the nature of the crime or the date of the death sentence, determine whether an individual will actually be executed. In overturning Jones's death sentence, Carney noted that the inmate faced complete uncertainty as to when or even whether he will be executed. Carney said the random few who will be executed will have languished so long on death row that their execution will serve no retributive or deterrent purpose and will be arbitrary, writing, No rational person can question that the execution of an individual carries with it a solemn obligation of the government to ensure that the punishment is not arbitrarily imposed and that it furthers the interest of society. Natasha Minsker, a director of the ACLU of Northern California, said Wednesday's ruling marked the first time that a federal judge had found the state's current system unconstitutional. She said it was also the first time any judge has ruled systemic delays create an arbitrary system that that serves no legitimate purpose and is therefore unconstitutional. During the 2013 Porcupine Freedom Festival, Davi Barker presented an idea for a renegade psychological experiment. Since then, he has refined his idea and put his plan and research into writing. He explains, We aim to show the world beyond a shadow of a doubt that power corrupts absolutely and corrupt authority deserves no obedience. Authoritarian sociopathy is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Antiwar.com reports a U.S. Predator drone fired several missiles in northern Waziristan, killing at least 20 people and destroying at least one house. Pakistani officials dubbed all of those killed militants, claiming 12 of the 20 were Uzbeks who were members of the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. The other eight were said to be local tribesmen. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A dead iPod is remembered as expensive. It's the Onion Radio News. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Despite heroic efforts at resuscitation, a third-generation 30-gigabyte iPod, serial number AP356372, was pronounced dead early this morning at the age of two. The iPod's closest companion, Sarah Zartman, says she'll never forget the great music it used to play, nor will she forget the nearly $500 price tag. I'll remember those 3,500 songs as long as I live. That iPod was convenient, portable, and really pricey. Zartman added that had she known the iPod's lithium-ion battery would have such a short lifespan, she might have spent more time listening to it. AP356372 is survived by a BlackBerry. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Johnson. And Mark. And we also have Skype. So Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. We started talking about Bitcoin. You're certainly welcome to continue that conversation if you have something to add. Also, Johnson, you've got a very disturbing story about... A guy who at one time was uh, 12, and at that time he got involved with some sort of sexual action Mm -hmm. with a relative, and somehow the authorities found out about it. Yep. What's the story? 
Well, okay, I'll I'll start this out here. This story is by Lenore Skenazy. Oh, great, from Free Range Kids. That's right, and from uh, Reason.com, apparently. Okay. And uh, she has written the story that she agreed to keynote the Reformed Sex Offender Laws, Con- or sorry, the Reformed Sex Offender Laws Conference in uh, Dallas, Texas, which is apparently going on this week. Um, okay. She didn't expect it to hit quite so close to home. Before I arrived, uh, I got a phone call from a soft-spoken, super articulate, articulate young man, Joshua Gravens, who is a Soros justice scholar based in Dallas. His specialty is the justice of sex offender registry and the fact that it isn't making kids any safer. Um, she links cites a, su- a study in an article. He was also on the public sex offender list until recently and still has restrictions on his movement. He invited me to come with him to the police department to give notice that he had moved. Who could resist? Josh had become a sex offender at the age of 12. That's when he touched his sister's vagina twice. His sister told their mom. Mm. Josh said it was true. He was too embarrassed at the time to mention that he himself had been raped as a young boy by three local high school kids. And their mom called the counseling service for advice. The counselor said Josh's mother was required to report his crime to the authorities, and the next day he was arrested. Wow. He spent the next four years in juvenile prison. The Texas Youth Commission. How old was the sister? Does it say that? Younger, Uh, I think. Uh, sister, 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 sister told his mom. I don't know. Okay. Presumably she was younger. Presumably. Presumably. Yeah, but we don't know. Okay, so anyway, the charge was... Uh, ag- oh, okay. Uh, she was under 14. The charge was aggravated sexual assault. It doesn't assault. make her younger, yeah. but... <laughs> the charge was aggravated sexual assault because any sex offense against a person under the age of 14 is automatically considered aggravated. Mm. He got out at age 16 and was put on the sex offender registry, which in Dallas requires him to report in person to the authorities once a year, as well as any time in his life... Uh, any t- Anytime anything in his life changes. Today, he is 27, married with children and smiley. We met up when we had a jolly breakfast, except the fact that he felt he said he felt too pudgy and to start a speaking tour. And then he went off to the registry because his family had just moved to a new house and he had to let the, red, the state know uh, no more than seven days after the move. Just as... as uh, Just as the detective in the nondescript office finished typing this information into the system and Josh and I were about to go to lunch, a man with a beard and a badge strode up and said, Joshua Gravens, yes, you are under arrest for not alerting the authorities to your new address. He whipped out handcuffs. Put your hands behind your back. As the man tightened the cuffs, Josh calmly explained that he was registering his new address that very minute. The law says that you have to register the fact that you are going to move seven days before the move, too. Oh, wow. I think you're mistaken, said Josh, as pleasantly as if he was discussing the weather. I was told to arrest you, was the reply. Right, so it really doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter what the law says. I'm a law enforcement officer, and somebody told me what to do. These people should not be called law enforcement officers. They should be called, uh, you know. Tools. Whatever they are, they're not law enforcement officers, because many times they don't read the laws. They don't know the laws. They can't quote the law. A law enforcement officer would be enforcing the law, would understand the law, would have a, 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 you know, a fine grasp of the law, but no person could possibly know all the laws. So just to be clear. This guy's getting arrested in front of Lenore Skenazy while they're out to eat? Yep. Okay. And, Not in, while they're front, out to and eat. in front of the, I believe he was at the registration for no. registering where he was, Right. registering so his location. He goes oh, in okay. to register his change. I they see. say, you know, the, the information goes in the computer. Probably some alert goes out in the office. Hey, this guy's here changing his address. Mm, okay. um, somebody says, hey, don't they have to tell us seven days before they change their address too? Arrest that guy. Get out there and get him in cuffs before he gets away. The, kid, it's the hell, children. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier to get them when they're in the office. Right. <laughs> and, you know, who knows? We, we don't know the details of how this happened when it was, you know, he was 12 years old with his under 14-year-old sister. What more do you need but to know? I mean, kids fool around. probably doctor. Yeah, you know, kids like fool some around. Kind of, like, you know, it's ridiculous. Well, it sounds inappropriate, but the question you need to ask yourself but is- 12 is, years old. Right. Innocently Four years. Should a 12- What does a 12-year-old have to do- 
with a 27 year old to end up spending four years in a juvenile in the juvenile system crazy. and be a sex offender for the rest of their life. I don't have think a if, stupid parent. If they 12- that's what they have to do, they have to have a parent that is incredibly stupid and calls the police. Well, once the parent is in the sort of, like, I need help. I can't raise my children by myself. The state should do it. I, I should always call the state because the state knows better than me. Well, she I'm did call, call a counseling p- service. Yeah. These counseling services are often, uh, d- you know, they're disguised as people there to help you and. And the, then they tell you to call the state. Well, I don't know that. I'll bet you they they could very well have done it while she was on the phone. And like they could have piped this, her through or this whatever. This reminds me of the Tom Ball case here in New Hampshire. This is the guy who set himself on fire out in front of right. the courthouse here. His case originally was sort of similar. There was a uh, an incident with him and his four year old daughter where not sexual, but he he kind of smacked her, I guess, in the mouth, and that right. was she wrong. Kept, she kept on uh, before bed. I mean, these anybody who's had a four year old understands they do weird and inappropriate things. Uh, she was licking his hand uh, bef- before bed, and like you know, she'd lick his hand, he'd smack her lightly on the face, and. She'd lick his hand and do it again. I and think he only smacked her once was the allegation. I read the, the case file, a good, okay. good amount of the case file. But whatever it was she was doing, he he smacked her, and obviously that's inappropriate. But what happened was the wife at the time had called one of these counseling places, and the counselor told the wife, you have to call the police or you could be arrested. Yeah. Now, that may have been a complete misinterpretation of what the law actually was, but it sounds like a very similar situation where a counselor is giving very bad advice that in this case resulted in some terrible things happening. So to continue, so uh, she says, Josh handed me his car keys and followed the man out to his van along with a handcuffed woman who was crying. She was going to jail for having listed her address as a hotel when she actually lives in her car in front of the hotel. <laughs> This statute suggests that the officer was correct, however. The registrants must report their intention to change addresses seven days before actually moving, according to the statute. Mm. After trying to reach Josh's contacts, I hurried over to the sex offender conference to ask, what would happen to Josh now? I might be mistaken, said John Cordiero, a sex offender registrant and director at Fort Worth Reentry Program for Offenders, but technically he, he has broken the law, and failure to comply with the registry laws is considered a new sexual offense. Oh, oh God, wow. are you kidding a me? A sexual offense? Yes. Any registering snafu is considered a sex crime, and depending on the judge, it can be punished as harshly as the original offense. In other words, wow. Josh, at 20 27 will be treated as if he just touched an eight-year-old's vagina again. Eight years old. Eight so years now old. we know she was eight years old and he was 12. T- Typically, there's a mandatory minimum of two to five years, said Cordero. In Arkansas, a mandatory he- minimum of two years for violating the terms of sex offender registry. That's the minimum. Because he's being treated as though he touched an eight-year-old's right. vagina. Crazy. In Arkansas, he'd be looking at six, said another attendee. Now maybe Josh will get a great lawyer, maybe he'll get a lenient judge or a compassionate prosecutor, or maybe he'll spend half of the next decade in prison, charged as a sexual predator for showing up 13 days late with his moving plans. Well, surely it's time some, to reform the sex offender laws. Yeah, surely somebody out there thinks this is appropriate and they think this man is getting what he deserves. Would love to hear from you if you're out there. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I have another story, and to compare and contrast what happens to a sexual offender when they're when they work for the government all right great we'll get into that here in a moment and your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome so sad that his uh the mom in that case called the police wow everything could have just been handled in the home are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Go. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2236. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything right now. Sex offender registries and how these poor people are being treated. Look, I know these are the people that everybody loves to hate. But there are so many stories within the world, this huge world of the sex offender, that are really tragic stories. And these people have had a difficult enough time with what with going to prison and all, in a lot of cases. Then when they get out, they're subjected to all these insane rules and regulations. Johnson has been sharing with us a story from Free Range Kids about a guy who's now in his 20s, late 20s. He's got a family. He did something with a, his sister when he was 12 and she was 8, and his mom unfortunately called the police, which well, was a huge mistake. Yeah, after a counseling service told her she had to. Right. And, uh, and so then... You you know, this guy gets on the sex offender registry at age 12, spends four years in a juvie prison, finally gets out. And now 10 years later, he's going to move with his family. He was going to inform them after the move. They then arrest him because he didn't inform them before he made the move. So he was informing them within seven days of having made the move. But they also apparently told him that, oh, 
well, you didn't know this, but you had to inform us within seven days of the move happening, so prior to the move. So you've got to go um, to the police station, let them know you're going to move within seven days, and then right. you have to know that the, uh, within seven days after having moved that you moved. Or I'm sorry, not within seven days prior, but a- outside of seven days, meaning that prior to seven days before you've moved, you have to inform them. He didn't know that, so now he's facing new sex offender charges, even though he hasn't been alleged to have actually harmed anybody. That's the insanity we're discussing here. You're welcome to comment, especially if you favor what's happening to this guy, if you think he should be cracked down on. 855-450-FREE. There are a whole bunch of reasons why somebody might want to get a second passport. This guy, for instance. get out of here. Or perhaps renounce their citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing their U.S. citizenship, but people do it all uh, all around the world. Whether it's a government intrusion on your privacy or protest against foreign policy, protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or just as some kind of refuge for you and your family. You may want to get a second passport or to change your citizenship, check out the St. Kitts program at passportsforbitcoin.com. Obviously, they, they take Bitcoin. It's just another way that Bitcoins offer you more freedom. Passports for Bitcoin.com. That's a F-O-R Bitcoins, not the uh, number yes. four. Passports, F-O-R Bitcoin.com. And, you know, it is, it is Ian, what are you talking about? It is hard to feel badly for, like, the legit sex offender that you re- imagine from the movie. Yeah, I don't consider this guy a legit sex offender. Right. I and consider what people, he did at age 12 to be experimentation. What most people are going to do is they're going to say, look, I support the sex offender registry laws, which have not been shown through studies to to, to diminish uh, sexual crimes against children or adults or anybody, mm-hmm. but I support these laws for making life diff- difficult on the real sex offenders, but not for people like this. But the problem is when you say something like that is, is you what you're doing is you're turning the government loose on a class of people. Mm-hmm. And the government is, you know, historically, you've got several thousand years to see that these this organization is incredibly difficult to deal with provides incredibly bad customer service yeah. and ne- it, they, they don't get it right because they don't have to you know when, when you we, screw it up you go to jail if when and if this guy ever gets off the sex offender registry and he's he's 27 now married um he spent yeah. four years in juvie for uh, you know touching his sister inappropriately uh, one day when he was 12 twice apparently w- one day twice um, in one day yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, inappropriately. And I think that that's absolutely ridiculous. And I think most people would agree that's absolutely it ridiculous. Is. The problem is, is they're willing to say, well, these other people, um, they need to have they need to have this registry. And I, I think that, look, if you're going to do the registry thing, what if somebody has been clean for 10 years? Shouldn't they have an opportunity to get off this thing instead of spending the rest of their lives checking in uh, the, the registry? Well, the problem with the registry is the government implements it and no one will stand up for these people yeah sure nobody's ever going to stand up for them no one's going to say this isn't fair because they're sex offenders and you're not allowed to say anything nice about sex offenders now wait a minute isn't lenore skenazy going to speak at a conference about right. reforming these laws, so okay. somebody's standing up okay. for them. But it's I'm a sorry. very difficult it's thing to do. It's hyperbole. Nobody, the vast majority of people listening to me, do not have the guts to stand up and say that this is inappropriate. Yeah. That we shouldn't be just blanketing these people in. Well, somebody who so takes a people... pee behind a tree at a golf course. Somebody who touches a, a family member inappropriately when they're twelve. You know, plays doctor. These people shouldn't be on the list, and no one will say anything because they're too scared. Well, because there are so many lunatic morons out there that are just like it's a sex offender you did your friend <laughs> <Derp-a-dur. laughs> that's exactly what it's like that's I, exactly what it's like i don't think the that, social pressure is very high yeah i don't think that uh, even a flasher should be on a sex offender list i mean a flasher doesn't actually hurt anybody you know? I, I think that a flasher could potentially come to the point, like they're, they're coming, you know, like they may be, they're participating in behavior that 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 is on the way to <laughs> touching somebody inappropriately, grabbing them or whatever. I don't know if that's necessarily true. A flasher likely I was gets a, his jollies off of the act of flashing. Uh, I was in know, a the, room with a guy who was a flasher, um, in, in room in, in a prison with a guy who was a flasher that then stepped it up to uh, sex offense. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 
So well, what was the sex offense that he stepped it up to just out of curiosity? He um, tried to grab a woman off of a bicycle and uh, ended up yep, she ended okay. up falling and hurting herself quite That's a bit. That's usually what will happen when you, you know, grab someone off a bicycle. And and like skinned her knees up and something, and then she punched him in the face really hard. That and was a sex offense, though? Sounds like an assault. The dude keeps on flashing people that he grabs someone off a bicycle. What the hell do you think he's well, trying to do? It, well, I yeah, exactly. Was he, he grabbing somebody keeps, off a bicycle with a trench coat <laughs> like, while he was wearing his, his <laughs> Yes. Bike? That's yeah, what he was go. doing. <laughs> okay. Um, look, <laughs> you can ask all the questions you want. Him. I'm the one who stayed in the room with this guy for months. And yeah. yes, he was a pervert and he couldn't get any <laughs> and it made him crazy. So what happened Legalized when you were sleeping? Was it like... Dee, 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 dee. What's that? When you were sleeping, was it like... Is that the noise someone makes when they're molesting another person? I don't know. I don't know what that. I don't know if he's like, you know, was he tickling you at all or doing anything uh, He never did anything inappropriate with me, but I would would have been a poor choice for him to do that. Um, But Did you sleep with like one eye open just to make sure, you know, like... I wasn't in worried at all. (laughs) Yeah. Um, No, but I mean, I do... I would say that this uh, this guy did... He had a rough time of it, man. You know, I mean, he was... he, He just had a rough time of it. So... Um, 855 450 free is the toll free number. Maybe you've got experience with the sex offender registry. You know how insane this is. Of course, one of the classic restrictions that we've talked about on the show in the past are the ones where the people on the registry cannot live in certain areas. So they can't be within a thousand feet. And, and again, it's different state by state. So in some places, there's cer- there's a certain restriction that says the sex offender, so called sex offender, cannot be within a thousand feet of, say, a church. A playground yep. or a school. Florida's and, uh, notorious for this, and it makes it very difficult when you start drawing these, uh, and where children congregate. So oh, um, yeah, okay. when you start drawing these circles, concentric oh, circles yeah. around all these, not concentric, you can't go anywhere. But these circuits, circles around all of these uh, locations, it ends up like there's very few neighborhoods where these people can live. And that means they all have to live together in the same neighborhood. Because right. if there's... And is this what we want? No. You need to ask yourself, the average person out there that's not thinking about sex offenders laws at all, do you want sex offenders congregating, uh, concentrating? into one neighborhood where they can kind of get together there and was, plan their little sex offender crimes together. I, you know what's more dangerous than a sex offender? Three of them working yeah. together to kidnap your kids. Where they all know they're sex offenders. I mean, it's one thing to be a pervert out uh, and think you're alone and not know who the other perverts are, but if you know that the, the trailer park you're living in is the one trailer park in town where every other sex offender is living, you know the odds are pretty yeah. good. You're going to be talking with other sex offenders there. Uh, and there was also another story in Miami where they were just living under a bridge. All of them. 855. <laughs> nowhere else they could live. 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Springtime is saved big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks... Why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Bring up anything you want, 855-450-3733. We are talking about, or have been talking about, uh, the sex offenders and the insanity of the sex offender registry, how it includes so many people who actually haven't harmed other human beings. I don't think that should be going on at all. And then, of course, once you're on the registry, you're subject to all kinds of ridiculous, invasive rules that make it very difficult to live. In one guy's case, he forgot to tell them in advance, didn't know he had to, that he was going to be moving, but he thought he had to tell them after the fact. Turns out you had to tell them in advance and after the fact. And I think move. it's important to point out that not telling a, a sex offender failing to report that he was going to move in seven days, even though he reported that he had moved uh, within seven days, uh, is another sex offense. Right. So now they're treating him as though he's actually conduct, uh, you know, committed rape. And they're going to bring more charges against him. Right. Well, so basically. he has committed the crime again just by yeah. failing to know what their laws were. So it's insane, and you're welcome to comment on that. But, you know, while I was uh, looking around during the break on the internets, I found uh, sort of a related story. Even if you can't get behind changing the sex offender laws, and I think they need to be changed. In fact, Lenore Skenazi, apparently from Free Range Kids, which is a great blog, mm -hmm. is going to some sort of a conference in Texas about the changing of these terrible, uh, oppressive sex offender registry laws. But even if you can't get behind changing the sex offender registry laws, I hope you could at the very least get behind not raiding people's homes who didn't do the crime. Like, there's a story from South Florida, and this is Local10.com, and I believe that's the Tampa Bay area, if I'm not mistaken. Where okay. there's a story here about some folks, and there's actually no text. Uh, there's It's just video. So I'm going to play the video here for you, the audio, of a couple who had their home raided 6 in the morning by a SWAT team. Oh, God. They were looking for child pornography. Caught on camera, a raid. Agents busting down doors, tearing the home apart, and detaining the couple inside. They were reportedly looking for evidence of child pornography, but... They may have hit the wrong house. And what they didn't know is that surveillance cameras were rolling the entire time. Local 10 is the one and only station with the video and the homeowner's account of what happened. Crime specialist John Turchin has the story. They kicked in and broke every door, whether it was locked or not. I was scared to death. 
It was just after six in the morning. Those are snapped photos of the broken door, uh, you know, lock areas. Well, if they're going, if you're going to have a raid, door breaking is kind of uh, part of the deal, right? Like you can't have the agents testing the door to see if it's unlocked mm-hmm. and will move, and if there's a deadbolt. You know, you that just doesn't can't make it. it less scary, Mark. I understand. I'm just finding it out. Thing for people. Well, the frightening thing is, is that nobody, ca- that, that so few Americans care that there are so many SWAT raids. Oh, yeah. I think that the number. We, we were we've been quoting forty thousand a year, and I think that I've heard we've been quoting that for years now. We've yeah. been quoting it for years. I think I heard it's a hundred thousand squat raids oh last God. year. Um, I'd like to look up that one. That's interesting. Okay, I'll go take a look. Here's some more info. Surveillance cameras captured it all. The armored vehicle pulling up. More than a dozen heavily armed men and women in full SWAT gear getting into position, and the moment they made their move. We heard that three times. I didn't know who it was. I thought it was someone breaking in our house. I was thinking it was a home invasion. What else would you think at six in the morning? Right. And of course, that's what it is. There are men with guns invading your home, breaking down every single door. And the purported reason for this is child pornography. Now, look. I get the I I get the claim, the idea that oh well, the police need to go in real fast. They need to go in hard because drug dealers are gonna flush the cocaine. Now look, if you got a lot of cocaine, you ain't gonna flush that cocaine real fast. Certainly, if you got marijuana, that's not gonna be an easy task. Um, if you've got child pornography, I don't think the average user. I mean, maybe they're alleging these guys are making child porn. That seems even less likely. The average user, you know, do do they have a red button they can hit real fast that's going to, you know, wipe their hard drive in an instant? Do they really need to go in with a SWAT team at six in the morning to serve a warrant for child pornography? Or could you just maybe, I don't know, camp out down the street and wait for the homeowner to come home for the day and then maybe walk up and say, We've got this warrant here. Is this really necessary at six in the morning? It would seem like you could. Well, it would seem to me that you could knock on the door at that point and, um, you know, somebody's usually going to come to the door. Look, I just going to knock on the door. Why not go at, you know, five in the afternoon when somebody's getting home from work or something like that? I suppose that's a possibility. Oh, let's continue with the uh, the video here. I just think it's so completely outrageous. These it was tactics. fifty thousand. Um, fifty thousand. It was fifty thousand per year by two thousand and five. Hold on, I'm sorry. Okay. Keep going. We'll learn more. And next thing I know, the door flies open, and I flashbang it. Flashbang! This is where the flashbangs hit. I keep it covered with a carpet because the side of it actually starts to draw excitement and fear out of me. I bet it does. Carrie Edwards and her longtime live-in boyfriend, Donnie Douglas, say the next two hours were pure hell. Both undressed, pulled from their beds at gunpoint, forced to the floor, and cuffed. This as agents trashed their home, breaking a vintage statue and smashing a glass shower door. I'm sitting well, here, that was necessary. are going through my head. <laughs> I'm going to find the strength to get up. I'm going to run out. I'm not going to die here in my, in my house execution style, which is what I thought they were going to do. Did they ever tell you why they were here? No. Eventually, wow. they say the agents told them they were with Homeland Security and armed with a warrant for any computers and electronic media. None of them had badges, none of them had ID, none of them had none of this. All they had was police to your shirt or ice. You can turn the TV on while I'm bringing the soda. A month later, Edwards and Douglas say they're still traumatized. We're still baffled. We're still wanting to know what's going on. We want answers. We don't do anything wrong. In Southwest Miami Day, John Turchin, Local 10 News. We contacted the Department of Homeland Security hoping to find out what they found out and if this was actually the wrong house. The public information officer told us, quote, we cannot comment. This remains an open investigation. There you go. Six in the morning. People kicking in doors, destroying the shower door for some reason. Let's just let's smash this. What the hell? They're child por- they're child pornographers. We'll just destroy the whole house. Now maybe there's you know maybe maybe there's some sort of device in the house that actually does have some uh, nude pictures of uh, kids involved in sex acts. Is this still necessary? This kind of behavior, maybe it was just the husband or the boyfriend. Maybe she didn't have anything to do with it. If they end up putting him in handcuffs later on, because they're not arrested yet. If they end up putting him in handcuffs later on, does that make the raid okay? What they did to this poor lady? She's traumatized by this. Is this okay for those of you? uh, Look, child pornography, bad. It's bad to force kids into, you know, sexual situations and take pictures of a video. I get that. 
But is but this we, okay? But we see what the results are over and over again, too. I mean, you know, look, a lot of these times, these are informants. How did they come to the conclusion that these people had child porn? Well, the typical way that I've seen in the, the news stories about these arrests is usually they'll be online on some service and they'll trade pictures with an undercover officer, basically. Fine. Um we should know that evidence, and they should yeah. be able to find that evidence. They should have, you know, that's evidence, right? right. That's an entirely different story. But what about an informant? You know, you want to get out of your drug, you know, your marijuana mm. possession charge. You just say that the uh, neighbor down the street has child porn. I don't know how often that happens, but I suppose I it don't could. either. But these people weren't found with anything, not yet. Now, presumably, they they confiscated devices, right? So they took if there was a computer in the home, that was what the warrant was there for, was to take the computer. Uh, but do you need to go in at 6 a.m. for that? Is that really necessary? Who can defend the actions of the police in this case? Who can defend the actions of the police in the last case with a guy who's 27 now with a family, got a child uh, sex offender thing on his rap sheet at age 12 for touching his sister? Who can defend what they're doing to that guy going after him, even though he hasn't actually harmed anybody since then? I, can't I just want to know who I, these people are. I can't find how many SWAT raids there are in America. They're having a very difficult time counting that number up. Yeah. Um, in excess of fifty thousand a year um, is what it, it was in nineteen eighty. It was four thousand a year. Now we have a hundred times that. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts at, at eight fifty five. At least fifty times that. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Should the police just be able to destroy anyone's home because they suspect that something's going on? It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now, introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS, but you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample, 1-800-608-9424. You've been lied to, lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Free Talk Live. If anybody else wanted to know how to do it, y'all gave them the information, and plus how to get illegal drugs, how to get hand grenades, and I'm... <laughs> I mean, this is a free country, but I don't, you know, but you but, gave out web addresses, uh, Silk something. The you Silk know, Road is a revolutionary website that allows people to buy from the black market in a much safer manner than they currently buy. And I'm all about harm reduction, Bob. I think that uh, reducing oh, this harm. this is great for a free country. Let's get everybody on to safer illegal drugs. Do you think anybody did crack oh, so that makes it, after watching so our that, show so that had never done it before? That it, <laughs> that's part so of we, your liberty that because it's okay with a lot of people. Let's make sure we have it. Let's keep advertising. No, I think that it is not my right to tell you what is right or wrong to put in your body. And nor is it your business to tell me what is right or wrong to put in my body or what I'm going to do with my uterus. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, then please shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. And you can enter Amazon. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just click into the right Amazon for you and you get your shopping taken care of. And Free Talk Live gets a cut when you do that. So it makes a big difference for us if you just take that extra moment to go to shop.freetalklive.com. In fact, you can save yourself that moment by clicking when you just go once to shop.freetalklive.com. Then click your favorite Amazon. And as soon as you land at Amazon's site, bookmark that landing page because that's got the special little code in it that identifies that you are coming from Free Talk Live. And then all you need to do in the future is go back to that bookmark. So again, check it out at shop.freetalklive.com. Again, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, of course, uh, we've been talking about the insanity of sex offender regulations. That was what was the bulk of the first part of this hour. But now the story out of uh, South Florida, and actually might have been the Miami area rather than Tampa. Um, I know there's a Channel 10 in Tampa, but there might, might be one in Miami. Anyway, these folks were attacked at 6 in the morning by a full SWAT team. They brought the Bearcat in, it looks like. You can't really quite make it out in the video because it was 6 and it was pretty dark, but you can definitely well, see an armored If your community vehicle. had a Bearcat, wouldn't you bring it in? Um, well... I, I wouldn't be doing things like this, Mark. Uh, <laughs> if I were going to do something with a bear cat, it would only be some sort of a hostage situation or something where you might need to have an armored vehicle. I don't really think that uh, I don't really think the average child porn user or even child porn creator is going to be armed up and uh, going to want to go out in a gunfight with the police. I suppose it could happen, but you don't really hear about those stories very often. Usually when they bust somebody for child porn, it's like some priest or a cop or a city councilor or something like that, and it's usually done without inc much incident. They don't have to go to anybody's house at 6 in the morning, but maybe this is more common than we realize. Maybe this only really made the news because, as they pointed out in the news story, there's video. Yes. So there were uh, cameras on the outside of the house. Right. You don't have video from the inside of the home, but on the outside of the, like, I don't know if it was an apartment or a townhouse or something like that, but somebody had installed cameras on that, their house, and, uh, pull, you know, they've got footage of these thug cops going in and raiding these people's home at 6 in the morning. They really don't like video like this coming out because it's very difficult for them to look good in these circumstances. You know, if they're actually going after somebody who's a real threat to humanity, then I think they'll look good in a circumstance. Do you like think that. that it raises the um, the d defendants here, these people's chances mm -hmm. of having they haven't been charged yet, having charges leveled against them because they brought the video out? Because at this point, the mm. police. You mean they'll gonna... find some child pornography on their computer? Well, okay, so I'm uh, I have spoken to one person who has been charged with child porn, actually two, um, and in this one person's circumstance, they claimed that look, I had porn on my computer. The police claimed that some of that porn was of women below the age of eighteen. Since the drug charges that they had against me were true. I was stuck mm. on, they kept on offering me a plea bargain, but they included these chi charges of child porn. Mm. Now, I didn't have any porn of anybody who, you know, any children. I had pictures of 
women, and the police claim that some of those women were below Teenage the age of girls. Right. Teens, barely legal. Barely legal. That nonsense. Um, Hustler.com, by the way, now taking Bitcoin. <laughs> so I think that this is... I, you know, is that a plausible story? I don't know. I wasn't there. Is it a plausible story? It's plausible to me. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I can't say I've read the the regulations on this. I don't know if knowingly is a requirement of uh, possession of child porn. I mean, a lot of cases in a lot of well, uh, criminal... nothing's a requirement when a um, a plea bargains in the offing. That's Remember true. N- that far fewer than one percent of arrests result in a trial. So you don't know. We don't know. Let's go to the phones here. Uh, ladies first. Melissa's on the line in Colorado. Melissa, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Johnson and Mark. Hi. Hi there. You're on the air. Yeah, hi. Um, well, I was actually calling about the California split, and you had mentioned that last night that you would talk about that. Oh, yeah. We actually didn't get into it last night. Uh, California, apparently there's yeah. going to be a ballot measure in 2016, which will allow the voters in California to approve a split into six parts. Yeah, so um, my first thought about that was, like, why so many? It seems like a good idea, but why so many? And then right away I thought, hey, you know what? This guy is uh, hes trying to get someone. He knows somebody to put in office and, um, you know, the process of formation of a state and, and laws. So if somebody wants a grip on the legal decisions, well, there certainly are political motivations involved in something like this, yeah. right? I mean, if somebody wants uh, political power, having six states to have one of them that you can take over would be easier than uh, one than gigantic one. state yeah. that is basically and, a country. Yeah. So, like, my first impression, wow, that's a good idea. Why so many? And it seems like maybe it's like a, you know, maybe a, like a negotiation thing where they say, well, we'll offer more, but and then it'll end up being... Less. Well, I my first know. thought was is uh, when I read the article, yeah. um, I saw that uh, what they what they're calling Central California. They they've got lots of different names, but um, the the one they're calling Central California is going to be will immediately become the poorest state in the union hmm. as soon as it's created. Really, and yeah, the, the, the one next door to it, Silicon uh, Silicon Valley, is what they're calling that. Yeah. Will immediately become the wealthiest state in the union. Oh wow! So this kind of bothers me, right? That now I'm not saying that poor people benefit from rich people um, ruling them, or that rich people benefit from poor people ruling them. I'm not claiming Neither that at all. Benefit. But you know, if it would seem like you could, the the lines have been drawn here with the with with precision they know mm-hmm. why they drew the lines and what they were intending to do mm-hmm. and the people in silicon valley want nothing to do with the people in central california and vice versa or maybe not vice versa melissa any thoughts yeah hot topic yeah <laughs> what else did you want to talk uh, about i just i just thought it was like it, it seems like right away like wow that sounds like a good solution but but then but then right away I just can't help thinking like this guy's got some foreign connections and somebody over there is going to sell us out, you know, to, no, I don't to know. China or something. Thanks for the call tonight, Melissa. I appreciate it. Oh. The toll free number is 855 450 free. I don't if know China if wanted to buy a state, there's states in the offing. I don't know why in particular they'd want to go for, they, they'd want to go for a state that uh, was just created out of, uh, you know, the former California. I don't know if she, she was suggesting China. She, would, she said the word China oh, as did she, she was I going. Yes. Um, All right. Well, anyway, uh, I've got the story here. San Francisco uh, Reuters reporting a long shot effort to break California into six separate states got a boost on Monday when the billionaire venture capitalist behind the proposal said he'd gathered enough signatures to place it on the ballot in two years. Timothy Draper, founder of a Silicon Valley based venture capital firm that is invested in Twitter, Skype and Tesla, among other companies, has been agitating for months for a ballot initiative to chop the most populous U.S. state into smaller entities. He said, uh, spokesman for the campaign, Roger, uh, ra- rather, said it is important because it will help us create a more responsive, more innovative, and more local government. And that ultimately will end up being better for all Californians. The idea is to create six states with responsive local governments, states that are more representative and accountable to their constituents. And I totally agree. So do you think that the poorest state should be the poorest state and the richest state should be the richest state? I don't know. What are you suggesting otherwise? That they all be one state? Um, no, I'm suggesting that, look, uh, 
you, don't you think that 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 doesn't look good, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, hey, I'm going to draw up a map here and I'm going to give these people the Jefferson place that they've been looking for. And I'm going to cut up a few, few of these other places here. And then I'm going to take all these stinking leeches that are alongside the other end of this mountain range that mm-hmm. bug the crap out of me. And I'm going to get them out of my hair. You know, like these. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, if that's what the if people don't want to be associated with other people, that's their choice, right? Well, I don't know if people want to be associated with other people. Well, that's what you're suggesting here is that the individual who came up with this plot. Uh, Why does want- he get to put up the plot? That's what my question is. Because he's a billionaire who's funding the ballot measure. Right, right. Well, that's the problem. Money, um, money gives power, right? And like, so he gets to decide where the the lines are drawn. You know as well as I do that when it comes to political maps, where the line is drawn is an extraordinarily important thing. Where we come from in Sarasota, they drew they draw these long, weird lines around areas in order to properly represent people, which mm-hmm. in fact does the opposite. Well, I, I mean, that's what's new. This is this is political gerrymandering. I sure. mean, this is what happens. This I is think how the it value goes. in this is that once it happens in California, and I could frankly care less what happens in California. It's not that mm-hmm. important to me. Um, but w- when this happens in California, it shows other states and other people in other states that you can do this too. Right, like New York. They would love – upstate New York would love to cut out New York City. They would love that, from what I understand. Many of the people out there, at least. Certainly some of them would, and some of them wouldn't. I mean, there's a lot of money that comes out of New York City. And by the way, I don't expect that this this guy, Timothy Draper, the uh, venture capital guy, I don't think that just because he's proposed the six will mean that that would be what it ends up being. Isn't, isn't it on a ballot measure? Uh, yeah, but it has to be run through the... Uh, it has to be run through the state legislature. So I would expect that at that point, it'll be open to even more gerrymandering and manipulation. 855 450 free. You can bring up anything here. Hour three's next. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn. And you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. So you can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,303. Silver opened at $20.82. And Bitcoin is trading at $617.27. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more. GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at BitmainTech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. 
That's 844-248-6246. In the news, the Texas Department of Public Safety is now taking full sets of fingerprints from every Texan old enough to drive, adding them to a statewide criminal history database. Critics say the move is illegal, arguing DPS is misinterpreting a section of the Transportation Code that allows an applicant's thumbprints or fingerprints to be used for verification. Dallas Morning News columnist Dave Lieber also broke the story and says the law is intended to allow only thumbs and index fingerprints to be taken, not the entire set. Donald Jackson, a political science professor at Texas Christian University, is offering legal support to anyone wishing to challenge the new policy in court. The New York Police Department has been hit with a First Amendment lawsuit after a woman alleged her rights were violated when she tried to record police activity last September on the Upper West Side in New York. Plaintiff Deborah Goodman was allegedly pushed by officers and detained for more than 24 hours. Goodman also said officers grabbed her arm and handcuffed her after refusing to provide ID. The lawsuit asked a judge to force the NYPD to allow onlookers to record police publicly, as reported by WCBS-TV. The NYPD declined request for comment. The Obama administration is allocating $50 million towards a luxury Texas hotel equipped with various amenities with intentions to use the resort for housing undocumented children. Baptist Child and Family Services has been contracted to purchase the Palmer Resort and Hotel in West Laco a town a few miles north of the Rio Grande in Hidalgo County. KRGV reports the site will house up to 600 children aged 12 to 17 and create jobs for 650 people. The charity group said the resort would function as an intake facility and also a hospital. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Pentagon on Wednesday stated that a U.S. Navy nurse has refused to participate in force-feeding prisoners who are on hunger strike at the military prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The nurse has reportedly been moved to other duties while the case is under review. There's currently a federal court case seeking the end of the tube feeding, and 16 media organizations have called for a release of videotapes showing inmates being force-fed. The force-feeding came as a response to hunger strike protests that began last summer and grew to 100 participants at one point. A research fish biologist for the U.S. Geological Survey's office in Carneysville, West Virginia, says the practice of coal mining is causing the population of certain species to decline. Clear-cutting trees from mountaintops before blowing off their tops with explosives causes shattered pieces of rocks to enter the area's streams and rivers, subsequently releasing minerals stored within the rock into the water. Researchers say the minerals are changing the water's composition, lowering its quality, and thus killing off a number of fish and insect species. Tuesday afternoon, the Shasta County Board of Supervisors in Shasta County, California, unanimously voted to investigate geoengineering. Over 100 concerned citizens and researchers filled the meeting to present information on the dangers of solar radiation management, a type of geoengineering which involves spraying aerosols from planes to combat global warming. A video presentation and documentation will be forwarded to state and federal agencies related to air quality, transportation, and the environment. Resource Management Director Rick Simon said he would see if the county could afford to test for the chemicals that citizens say is being sprayed on them. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. A report on obesity rates released this week by the CDC confirmed that millions of courageous Americans continue to overcome the media's persistent pressure to be thin. Researchers told reporters that while the vast majority of film and television continues to portray thin, in-shape people, over 30% of Americans remain resolved in their effort to stand up to idealized images of men and women. Every day, people are inundated with unvarying images of slim men and women, but millions of heroic Americans continue doing their best every day to maintain BMIs 35 or higher. 
fire. These people aren't afraid to fly in the face popular culture deems acceptable and bravely eat and drink whatever they want, whenever they want. In other news, the nation's single men announce a plan to change their bedsheets by 2019. A woman who left the room crying earlier expects to jump back into the party just like that. And a courtroom artist is clearly infatuated with the bailiff. This two and a half minute long session of immersion therapy is finally complete. Your crippling fear of watching video news recaps should no longer be a problem. For more, keep checking theonion.com. Talk Live. Take control toll-free here as we launch into the third hour of the program. California may split into six different states if one billionaire venture capitalist has his way. Timothy Draper, the founder of a Silicon Valley venture uh, venture capital firm, has put forth the money to get the 808,000 signatures needed to place a measure on the ballot in November of 2016 to propose basically splitting California into six separate states. We'll talk more about it here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And then, Mark, I know you wanted to tell us about a woman who is being threatened because her lawn is a little too brown, apparently. We got all that on the way, plus your calls. In fact, we're going to jump right into your phone calls and thoughts with Jim in Virginia. And, Jim, you're on Free Talk Live. Are you listening on the radio tonight, Jim? I wish, if only I could. Okay, but, uh, I didn't think you were. Go ahead. Yeah, only one day on the weekend. Gotcha. We're on um, WLNI on FM there uh, on the weekend. Uh, go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Soon to be every night, I hope. That'd be great. Um, yeah, the, the people that, that had the, were their home broken into with the child porn, what was the agency? Uh, apparently, the Department of Homeland Security's ICE was involved in that one, the Immigrations and Customs Enforcement as well as local, uh, probably whatever the local PD was. Okay, I don't see what ICE has to do with child porn, but regardless, there's no authorization for federal police. Federal police are not legal, okay? They formed the FBI back when people started traveling in trains and moving around a lot and they had interstate kidnapping to just help and coordinate these statutory legal police in localities. Federal police are not legal. Certainly the Department of Agriculture SWAT team and you know, the Department of Weights and Measures uh, tanks are not legal. But, um, you know, nobody should be coming into your house from the federal government about child porn. It's not a federal issue, and federal police are not. Well, I'm sure the legal. federal police will be happy to hear you tell them that if, uh, if they ever come <laughs> into your home. Oh. Well... Yeah, that's true. I mean, when you know people have guns, then you've got your choices to make. But the other point I wanted to make was uh, it was very recently revealed that the NS, the, you know, some of the NSA programs that they have, um, the NSA can spoof your email. The NSA can write an email from one of you to the government saying, "I'm going to mm-hmm. do this violent act." The NSA can put video on your computer. Absolutely. <laughs> Anything they need to come and get you, I mean, obviously this was a mistake and these people were either innocent or, I mean, I have no idea why you would break someone's shower to find child porn. I (laughs) I don't know either. You're referring to, by the way, for our listeners just tuning in, uh, South Florida, a couple had their home raided, six in the morning, a huge SWAT team, uh, you know, military fatigues, busting indoors, destroyed a shower door for some reason while they were at it. Uh, conf- the warrant was to confiscate electronic devices for the purposes of looking for child pornography. And, and basically what I said about this was, you know, even if they did have child pornography, it was entirely inappropriate to do a police SWAT raid over this. This seems completely ridiculous and totally unnecessary. Well, it's, you know, the, 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 the drug war, you guys want to make all drugs legal. And, and I don't know about that for drugs, but certainly for what it's done to the police. There shouldn't be a no-knock warrant for anything. Okay, I don't see any reason that child porn shouldn't be the guys from Adam 12 with a normal police outfit and leather shoes knocking on your door with a piece of paper from a judge. Absolutely. You don't need you do not need a tank and military gear and I'm in the spirit of keen I'm going to my little small town and, and talk to my city council uh, next month. Oh, cool. About demilitarizing the police. Thanks you for know, doing we're making that. The military. 
we're making the military act like police and have to, you know, read the Taliban the, their rights before they shoot somebody. You know, but we're making the police having tanks and, and BDUs and boots and referring to me as a civilian. A policeman mm-hmm. disagree. I think the very best way to begin demilitarizing the police, and this is something they can't argue against at all, is to have them paint their uh, their Bearcat or their MRAP, to have them paint it pink. <laughs> or turquoise or lime, you know, like, you know, like, rainbow. Yeah. One of these pastel colors, because this will drive these macho black, uh, black wearing, uh, you know, thugs crazy. It'll drive them bananas. I got it. I'm not driving a pink truck. Um, I, I mean, I can tell you they're just not going to go for it. And it's, you know, every excuse, that they, all the excuses they have canned, which is, hey, it's for officer safety. Yeah. They don't have rescue with a, vehicle. They right. don't have that with a that's, pink truck. That's one of the things I like a lot about some of the some of the UK police is that they're always in those safety vests and they have to wear the safety yellow and the reflective yeah, tape yeah. and all that. If it's, if it's about safety, that's what the officer should be wearing. Jim, any other thoughts you want to share? Yeah, no, that's that's it. Love Thanks you for guys. the call, man. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Let's go to Justin. He's in Pitts, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, perhaps. Justin, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, are you in Pitts or Pittsburgh? Come on, Pittsburgh. All right, great. Go ahead. Um, I'm actually calling about something that kind of ties both of those stories together. Uh, did you guys hear about the bank robbery in Stockton, California, yesterday? No, tell me about it. Um, there were there was a, a thing that's called the Bank of the West in Stockton, Stockton California. Okay. Uh, three allegedly armed bank robbers went in, um, robbed the bank for something close to hundred thousand wow. dollars, took some hostages from the bank, um, and then proceeded to lead police on almost an hour long police chase, um, which ended with everybody that was left in the vehicle being killed except for one of the bank robbers, including a hostage who was left in the vehicle. Oh, no. Uh, There was, yeah, there was over 100 police officers at the end of it. And there's one short video I found on YouTube of uh, somebody might have been a local business owner. It looked like it was at a garage of some sort, uh, just out of view of the final firing squad, more or less. Uh, And you hear over 300 rounds or so. It's just completely, yeah, I, I mean... It's it's crazy. I, I can't. And the strangest thing is, if you look online, I mean, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but it almost looks like the footage has been removed because there is no amateur footage whatsoever, no cell phone shots, no nothing, hmm. save for a few here and there. But there, none of them show anything during the chase. Just, um, it went through several residential neighborhoods too. So I just I find it so hard to believe that nobody pulled out their phone and shot any of this. It's amazing. You know, with a bank robbery, banks are insured against uh, this sort of thing from happening. And so the idea that you would need to send 100 police after these robbers to shoot these guys to death while they have a hostage in the car and thereby shooting the hostage to death as well, over $100,000 that the bank is going to get back anyway in an insurance payment. This is just crazy. But with another thing you'll find yeah. out is that this one uh, well, this one robber that survived, he will be charged. I assume it's a he. Okay. That person will be charged for the deaths of all of his uh, cohorts and for the victim. Mm-hmm. Now, the police officer hailed down 300 shots upon them, but he'll be charged. Because anything that happens as a result of that felony, he's convicted of murder. This is wow. the fel- he's under the felony one murder statute, which then absolves, of course, the police officers sure. from, uh, well, I don't know, firing 300 shots at an innocent person. Well, it was in the con- uh, commission yeah. of a felony. Mark, you saw so what happened in the Christopher Dorner situation with the police officer that was, uh, um, you know, that that did killed some people in California, and they went after him. They yeah. shot up a several a couple of people's cars and did whatever the hell they wanted to do, and they haven't been charged. I'm These police th- officers unload their weapons in irresponsible fashions and nobody does anything about it, but they'll get you if you oh, yeah. if your concealed weapon just happens to untuck from your shirt. I'm looking at some amateur footage of a blue Ford Explorer that looks like it's just been, it looks like it's been through a war zone. Um, well, so yeah, the, the amateur the footage, if you want to find it, left too. if you want to find that amateur right. footage that you're looking for, search for Stockton Bank Robbery on YouTube and you will find cool. loads and loads of it. We can post uh, whatever video it is on our Facebook page too. Yeah, there you go. Justin, anything else you want to share tonight? 
Yeah, just one other quick thing about it. The hostage that was left at the end, um, whenever everything went down and the police started firing, the police official story is that one of the bank robbers used her as a human shield. But I, given the time frame, if you watch the one where they caught the sound of all of the shots being fired, I just don't see how it could have happened that way. There was no time between the time that the police car stopped and the firing started. And so all of these people were in like a car, right? Waiting. Right, exactly. <laughs> you're not going to use somebody uh, for, as a human shield if you're in a car surrounded by cops being if, shot to death? If a robber's using somebody as a human shield, don't shoot at them. There's more coming up here in a moment. Thanks for the call, Justin. It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live. And, of course, you can bring up anything you want by dialing in toll-free. California, will it split into six different sections? We can continue that discussion here in moments. And your calls are welcome at 855-450-FREE. Get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. We are able to make that available to you through BuzzBox. They have the best of the best coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. Coffee is a very absorbent crop, and that makes that organic certification that much important, more important to people. Um, the fact is, is that uh, you know many of these countries, they use leaded gas or they may you know not have the regulations on pesticides and this can be a real concern for for many maybe should be a concern for you but another thing that uh, is important to me and the reason that we've coupled with uh, buzz boxes is that they allow organizations like us to be able to give micro loans for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, you get the free pound. You see if you like. Um, and if so, you keep the subscription going and you continue to get your coffee delivered right to you. You don't have to think about buying coffee anymore. It just comes to you. And um, But for every 10 people that get their coffee that way, we are able to give another micro loan to another family that's able to uh, you know, work their way up out of poverty. If you want to help people, this is the way to do it. You can help them by giving them a hand up, not a handout, by simply getting your coffee that you'd normally get at coffee.freetalklive.com instead. Let's go to the phones and the fun. We got Habu on the line in Madison listening online. Hello, Habu. Yeah, hello. Good evening to you. Hello. You're on the air. Uh, go, ahead. Thanks for, th go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Um, of course. You, you know, I just uh, I had something else uh, which I'll get to, and I'm not going to filibuster, but I, I was hearing this micro loan stuff. Uh, um, Any more, microloan have become the scourge in third world countries because the interest rates range um, anyway in India f between 24 and 36 percent. Yeah, I checked on the, the I, I, I checked on the rate rates because I had read a story about this. I, hmm. I, I wanted to do my research, and um, these microloans come through World Vision, and the fact is is that the rates are very low, and if if they exist at all, depending on the situation. So yes, I am aware of that, well, and it was a big concern then. of mine. Yeah, and and this is the way microloans should have been instead of having World Bank and these Citibank and all these big banks. Uh, big intermediaries, this tend to escape the uh, loan sharks and go directly from one to from one small person to another small person yep. and, and, and be able to. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, you know, getting back to this um, this uh, city of uh, 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 police uh, shootout, um, uh, the, the, the facts weren't brought out properly. Actually, there were three hostages in the car. Oh, my God. Three You're talking about the, the Stockton bank robbery where the entire car yeah. was shot up. <clears throat> Which means there should have been even more caution when oh, having wow. these the, the, the shootout. And and these people, the, the police, in my opinion, of course, the robbers were the robbers. But the police threw caution to the wind, knowing that there were three, because this thing was all uh, the, uh, the bank, bank, bank employees. The third person, unfortunately, who died was a customer who was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Good Lord. That's so terrible. I'm sorry and to hear And her daughter was left behind in the bank. Oh. You know, so, 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 every time I see situations with the police doing these sort of, you know, this, uh, however many dozens of bullets are fired. In this case, somebody has speculated 300, and I listened to some video here, and I, I don't doubt that number. Um, but, you know, there's so many misses. This isn't a situation. I mean, a handgun isn't something that's even uh, that you want to be using from a distance more than uh, 10 yards tops. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, people miss with handguns. They're they're, they're not intended to be uh, accurate, um, you know, defense weapons. So. Well, they didn't miss the truck uh, that much. I mean, maybe they did. How do we know? We don't even know how many They certainly connected hit. quite a few times with that truck. I saw the some of sure. the video that Johnson had pulled up there during the break. Habu, thanks for that clarification. Anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, uh, yeah, and, and I, I didn't hear you opine on this this uh, this cockamamie notion of breaking up California. You know, the, <laughs> I think that this is something that's going around the world emanating from uh, the United States, meaning the World Bank, uh, IMF, and the American, uh, the, the military complex, meaning to uh, break up these countries into Bantustans, be it 
Yugoslavia or, South, or Sudan or, or even now Iraq, so that they become completely crippled and have no sovereignty, and, and they can just kind of uh, uh, bow to the whims of these big uh, uh, big powers who want to uh, who cover their resources. So that's just my. So you're cents. saying you don't support uh, California splitting into six parts. No, of course it has problems, but but to to you know just think of it, it's not going to be efficiency, and efficiency is not everything. Ever. You're going to have six uh, times the number of. You're going to have you know the same kind of people doing the same thing in uh, all these different uh, mini states. Well, well uh, I think that you have six times as many. They have things like, uh, you know, they have county commissions in every one of these counties already. Um, yeah, you'll you'll probably see an uh, an uptick in a certain amount of uh, bureaucracy, I would think, as far as, uh, you know, there'll be more governors. There'll be f- uh, five more governors. There'll be five more sets of legislators. But I also, I kind of feel like I get more representation in New Hampshire than people in California get in Sacramento, if you know what I mean. Thanks, Abu, for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you, although I disagree. I think that having more uh, political units is better than mm-hmm. fewer political units. I well, don't. Agree I would with- like to have as many political units as there are people. <laughs> I, I want to hear somebody make a remix of There's a Song Out There by the Propeller Heads called Take California. I want to hear them remake it into Break California. <laughs> <laughs> So I like the idea. I think that uh, the more choices there are, the better. The more options that people have as far as different places to go and live with different set, you know, setups and rules and things like that, better. Um, as far as the California, the former California states or what might be called the former uh, states of California or whatever, as far as them being implemented or uh, influenced by large governments from around the world, that doesn't seem to be too likely. Well, I can. Well, I, they're because going to the United States federal government still there, and you know, I don't think China's going to be able to. Throw Here's a little trick: when setting up your new state, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Here in New pro Hampshire, tip. there's one. Yeah, pro tip from people in New Hampshire: <laughs> there are 49 states where the lawyers have infiltrated, and and a federal government, where the lawyers have infiltrated Mm. almost so thoroughly that you're talking about something like 98% of the people that are in legislative positions in these 49 states and the federal government are lawyers. That's a pretty thorough uh, infiltration. In New Hampshire, the number is nothing like that. I frankly can't think of any lawyer that is in the New Hampshire State House. I may, I'm probably wrong. Oh, there's got to be some. There. There's 400 New Hampshire legislators for 1.4, 1.3-something million people. That means that about every 3,500, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, just a, a housing development, 3,500 people. Yeah. There are hotels in, in Las Vegas that hold more people than that. Um, the, the, for every 3,500 people, there's, a, there's a, a representative. That means that it doesn't, it doesn't pay the lawyers to do it. There's 100 bucks a year is what you get to do this in a gas stipend. It is not <laughs> worth it. That's how you keep the liars, I mean lawyers, out of the state house. What do they pay the senators in New Hampshire? Because I know there's it's, a lawyer it's, there. It's still a um, hundred bucks. Really? All right. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Molly Kelly's an attorney. Yep. 855 450 But I said the state house. 855 450 free. You can take control here of Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want by dialing toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. You can go and get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners. The main feature of the website actually allows you to control the content on the front page. Now, you can go and uh, log in with your Reddit account and Free Talk Live account. You just have to link them together in a very quick process. That's free. Uh, And then once you're logged in, you can vote up or vote down whatever the items are on the front page. You can submit an item to the front page. And that item can be whatever you want, whatever link to anything on the internet uh, that you'd like to share with our listeners and with the host of the show. So maybe a news item or a, a blog post, maybe a YouTube video that you think is interesting. Feel free to share it over at freetalklive.com. Timothy Draper is the founder of Silicon Valley-based venture capital firm uh, that apparently has gone pretty well for him. He's got a lot of money. He's thrown a bunch of it at a petition. 808,000 signatures were needed to place a measure on the ballot in November of 2016 that will, if approved, uh, be the first step on the path towards possibly chopping California up into six smaller states. Now, the plan has raised bipartisan hackles across the state, and opponents say it stands little chance of gaining voter approval. Apparently, I heard that in the past, California has had similar ballot measures, actually. 
I think it's interesting that uh, these ballot measures generally are in interesting because yeah. they get legislation that wouldn't otherwise get through legislators. Um, they get it on the ballot in front of people. I think that's interesting. Yeah, it's true. Um, in Florida, though, it wasn't that great. Um, like there was a, a situation that I think it was the same year that they outlawed smoking in bars. That's right. Which basically is a uh, it's it's a litmus test. Uh, do you like smoking or not? Um, mm -hmm. But outlawed actually outlawed smoking in restaurants except for bars that don't serve food or something like that was their their rule. The same year they did that, they also had this ballot measure was uh, basically would you like to Spend money on a, um, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars on a super fast choo choo train that runs between uh, <laughs> Tampa, Orlando, yeah, and right. Miami. And they voted for that one too. And, and, and people are like, I love choo choos. And on the same <laughs> one, I, I just, I, I was, you know, I got to vote in this one. This is one of the few times I voted in Florida. I, every time I'd move, I'd get to vote one time and yeah. before they caught me. And uh, being a felon, they didn't like it. So another oh, wow. one was, um, you know, the amount of square footage a pig has to have in a farm in Florida. And, oh, yeah, I remember that. And, it's and, like a turnaround. You know, people are like, yes, a pig must have, yeah, they should have that much square footage, uh-huh. You know, so they're deciding how much <laughs> square footage all, a pig needs to have. And aren't these all amending the Constitution, They're amending too? the Constitution <laughs> of the state of Florida. Because, I mean, they don't have yeah. a ballot measure there. They only have a constitutional thing. This yeah. is really hilarious. <laughs> you know, and then a few years later, after they're like, you know, they've bought millions of dollars of donuts for bureaucrats to study, how, you know, the effectiveness of having super fast choo-choos between Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. Then they people are realize, you know, I don't see a choo choo here. They're probably wasting our money. Let's vote against the super fast choo choo. And then they do it again. Now, didn't it have to be uh, sixty six percent in Florida uh, in I that don't situation? Recall. I don't recall that. But I know that all, almost everything passed with over 70%. It always did. It's like whatever you put on the ballot whatever in Florida would pass. Whatever you put on the ballot, these right. things. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great, Gertrude. <laughs> Let's get that here. Yeah. <laughs> the piggies do need more room. All right. So uh, back to the story and then back to your phone calls. Uh, Salazar is the spokesman for the campaign, Roger Salazar, and he says uh, that the campaign has gathered the signatures. It's going to be on the ballot. But the question is, what will happen then? In a uh, an off-the-air discussion about this, I think, uh, maybe it was between Daryl and I, because he's like into this stuff. He knows all the details about this, uh, you know, the, the electoral system. Anyway... My question was, in most of the cases of these proposed secessions of a state, like a state split, basically, because there was the Colorado proposal, there's now the California one, and there's, I think there was something else elsewhere. But in all these proposals, it usually has to go to the state legislature after it's approved by the voters. And that's what I was told about this one, but this article from Reuters doesn't mention that. It does say that uh, it's that apparently... Hang on a second. It has little chance of gaining voter approval, even if it does win the support of voters. It must still be passed by Congress. I thought there was a stop in between Congress and the state legislature, where the state legislature also had to approve it. At least that's how it was in Colorado, and I was told that was the case in California. But if that is the case, then Reuters got this wrong, and they left that detail out. But well, either way, some it's either way. If the voters pass it this uh, in November of 2016. It won't necessarily be a done deal for them. I, I can tell you that there are a lot of people that are upset about the idea of California essentially getting um, 10 more senators is the way they see this. Um, um, but Jefferson's very different. The northern part of the state is very different. From yeah, parts. I, you know, look, the circles I travel in tend to be a little more heavily uh, Republican. I don't mm -hmm. get to hear the what the Democrats uh, say as often. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I think it's hilarious. Uh, the Republicans are like, all them Mexicans in California. California is going to vote Democrat, you know, and it's just, oh, God, really? This is what I've got to listen to? So, um, yeah. yeah but there's bipartisan opposition to bipartisan this. Bipartisan opposition. People I don't, don't think, like the idea of splitting up a state, a lot of them. That's scary. I, I don't see that the federal government's going to go for it, but I support I And support it'll cut it into the power of the people in the state as Just well. because there are a lot of states that really do need to be broken up. They're just too big. and. It's, uh, that's, a, that's a problem. According to Stephen Maviglio, a Democratic political strategist who's formed one uh, formed the group One California with GOP strategist Joe Redotta to fight the plan, he says this is a colossal and divisive waste of time, energy, and money that will hurt the California brand. It has zero chance of passage, but what it does is scare investment away at a time when the governor is leading us into an economic comeback. 
Draper's plan would split the world's eighth largest economy along geographic lines. One state to be called Silicon Valley would include the tech hub along with the San Francisco Bay Area. Jefferson, named after the third U.S. president, would encompass the northernmost region. The state capital of Sacramento would be in North California, while South California would be made up of San Diego and the eastern suburbs of Los Angeles. And Los Angeles itself would be a part of a state called West California. Proponents say the division would help create a more business-friendly environment, solve the state's water issues, and ease traffic congestion. I'm not sure how it's going to ease traffic congestion right out the gate, uh, but maybe having more political subdivisions will make for better responsiveness of government, if only by a smidgen. So, You know, I think it's interesting. A lot of this does have to do with water rights. In California, that's a very big Mm. deal. And the people in, you know, essentially the legislator in California has told Northern California, you will supply water to Southern California or die. Um, And Mm. the people in Northern California are like, we want our water. We got these pot farms up here and uh, we want our water. And so it's, it's really a power struggle about water rights. I have no idea how that's going to happen. I, I think it's interesting when you think about it. Who has the right to water? Is it the person who's closest to where the water fell from the sky, or is it uh, you know other people Not that need it? In some states, in some states you collect your own water. You go to jail. Absolutely, and. You know, I mean, it, all water is moving from here to the ocean yeah. at, at any time anyway, but you can believe that it's going to be more difficult for Los Angeles to get its water, the water it needs, um, if uh, California breaks up. And I think that in and of itself is probably what's going to kill this. We will see over time. It's going to, again, be a couple years until this actually gets on the ballot. So uh, as it develops, we'll let you know more. And if you're in California and you can uh, clue us in, feel free to give us the inside scoop. Meanwhile, we go to Tennessee where Ty is on the amp lines. Hello, Ty. Hey, do you guys think that you could be adequately represented legally along with 165,000 other people? No. (laughs) No. Well, that's pretty much what it works out to be when you consider that there's 435 members of the House of Representatives, and that's supposed to be the people's house. And if you divide 300 million by that number, that's not what you get, about 165,000. Really? And, and I was just thinking, well, in New Hampshire, I would imagine it's uh, it's even it's even worse than that. There's only two congressional districts in um, New Hampshire, so with 1.3 million people, you're talking about 650,000. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm talking just you know basic numbers, but yeah, I had heard that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that heaven will only be only have 144,000 people, so one member of the House of Representatives represents more people than in the Jehovah's Witnesses' heaven. All right, stand by, Ty. I want to come back to the discussion here in a moment. 855-453. This is Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. 
or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Enough time for your call if you dial now. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. And Free Talk Live also brought to you by Keenvention. Keenvention's coming up in October and November, October 31st through November 2nd. Your chance to come up, check out New Hampshire in the fall. And it's kind of like af- just after the peak leaf uh, peeping season. So you don't, you don't get to come in during the peak because if you were to come in during the peak, the hotel rooms would be $250 a night instead of $79 a night. Um, so, you know, it's a good time. The idea is to come and check out New Hampshire and meet the activists that are here already now making a difference. The names that you hear about on this show, Derek J. Freeman, Rich Paul. Rich Paul is actually our first announced keynote speaker for the event. We've already announced some other uh, panel discussions that are going to be going on. I've got more announcements to do. It's just, you know, it's one of the many things on my plate. My question is, will there be an ample enough supply of chalk this year? <laughs> for Keenvention? <laughs> yes. That's a good idea, have people go out chalking during Keenvention. Convention because last year we wanted to have people go out and Robin Hood during mm-hmm. Keenvention because the idea of Keenvention is you don't just sit in the hotel the whole time you've got you know reasons to leave the hotel like you know go out to lunch with some friends or go chalking or or Robin Hooding or go do some karaoke or whatever um, but last year we wanted to have folks go out and do some Robin Hooding and it was the, it was foiled the plans were foiled by the city of Keen because they knew that Keenvention was going to happen and they took the parking enforcement agents off the streets entirely on both Friday and Saturday during Keenvention so. The there was no Robin Hooding that could be done. Well, then what we should do is we should make sure to write a, me- a message in chalk next to every meter that says, this meter was disabled this weekend by Robin Hood. That sounds like a lot of work. There are, I think, hey, seven or eight hundred seven or eight hundred metered spaces downtown. Sure, Johnson. but how many people are there? You divide that Not up, that you, many. you break it down pretty quick. It's an in- intimate event. <laughs> only about a hundred or so were there last year. And I would say of that hundred, only some so many are interested in going out and, and Robin sure. Hooding. But uh, the real attraction is to be around other people who care about freedom and experience the community that we have up here and learn stuff about activism. The other events that happen in New Hampshire are great. The Liberty Forum happens in the wintertime. The Porcupine Freedom Festival happens in the summer. They're both very unique. Uh, But the one thing that you get in those events, you get these fancy big-name speakers from all around the country. 
at Keenvention, all of the speakers are New Hampshire-based liberty activists, and so you really get the, 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 the nitty-gritty of the activism, and uh, I think it's a really useful event. You can go and see for yourself by going to keenvention.info. Grab your tickets now. They're still just 40 bucks because I just haven't gotten around to raising the price. I will, though, at some point soon, so grab your uh, pre-sale early bird tickets at keenvention.info. And while you're there, check out the videos from last year. We got all the panels, all the speeches All of it's on video, and it's all free at keenvention.info. As we go back to Ty, he's in Tennessee. Ty, you're back on Free Talk Live. You know, I just just think it's a a big myth, this idea of representative government. No, oh, by the way, I wanted to correct some of your numbers. Ty, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you had said that uh, each each representative of the federal government, uh, that that they all represent, or one person represents like 160-some thousand people. According to my math, it's more like 689,000 uh, people. Is it really? It's 300, 300 uh, million. Divided, divided by 435. By yeah. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I messed, I messed up. I, I was actually being very uh, conservative in the estimate. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you, know, think, you got more than half a million people. I mean, 300 divided by, by 400. One person. <laughs> one person. Yeah, come oh, on. it's absurd. That's I mean, it's 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 absolutely absurd. And anybody who thinks about it for a little bit should realize that anyone who calls themselves a representative who represents more than themselves or one other person maximum couldn't possibly be representing those people. Even here in New Hampshire, where it's thirty five hundred people per state representative, which is the smallest ratio you're going to find anywhere. There's still no way that individual can represent the thirty five hundred different viewpoints because everybody's different. We don't all agree on everything. Uh, you know, within that particular political geographic designation, you can hardly get three people to uh, to agree on the ingredients of a pizza. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, the representative thing—it's a—it's a hoax. It's it's nonsense. But regardless, I'd still rather live in New Hampshire, where each representative has fewer people to whom they are uh, accountable, so to speak, or to whom they answer. It's easier to contact these people here. You can call them at their home. I can pick up a phone and call a state representative, and their children will answer the phone in a lot of their, uh, you know, offices. If they have children, most of them, yeah. uh, many of them are too old to have children. But I mean, you're calling their ho- house, you're calling their cell phone. Yeah, it's absolutely true, and you don't get that in uh, in a lot of states. But if you had the representation I- in the U.S. government that they had in New Hampshire, I couldn't tell you how many people, um, how many representatives there would be, but it would be something like. A hundred thousand representatives. Well, yeah, yeah. Would, or ten thousand. I can't remember yeah, what it is. It's an incredible number. I mean, thank if you, you do this math, thank you for correcting my math. Thank yeah. you for correcting my math. I was driving down the road. And I, I did this math just a few days ago, and it's like this is just unreal. I mean, if you do it, ba- I mean, it really it, basically it this be math. Obvious on the face of it. Yeah, if it, you do this, just is right. If you do this math really basically, man, just on the, if you think about it, three hundred million, right, divided by roughly four hundred reps, right, it gives you basically, you you know, you cancel out the zeros you get three-fourths of a million essentially people per representative yeah, yeah if you take 300 million people and divide it by 3500 which would be the amount per representative here in new hampshire mm-hmm. that's over 80 85 000 representatives. <laughs> right eighty five thousand. that's uh, almost as big as the largest city in new hampshire that's i true. mean eighty five thousand is a big metro <laughs> and that's how many representatives there would be in the united states if everybody was represented as well as they well i mean as is a, i don't even know what, how to describe that but if a representative represented as few people as they do in new hampshire i'd yeah. like to see them live in the, the you know that the, you've been always talking about that blue seed project where they're gonna yeah. build a floating city or whatever i'd like to see all those representatives live in that floating city and just float it away <laughs> <laughs> well, we could just uh, cut <laughs> off uh, cut, cut off like said, it's a, dc it's ahead, a top Tom. down it's a top down system you know real proper governance should come from the bottom up as it's needed. You know, for instance, uh, I forget the, the term. There's a term for it that uh, I learned about on listening to a podcast, I think, by Tom Woods. That it's it's talking about. You know, when when uh, like say a a neighborhood needs a street that connects the houses, then you could create an association that's in charge of that street, and that's their responsibility. You know what I'm saying? So. That's the only reason you would create some some collective uh, uh, group 
to be in charge of something is something that's beyond the reach of of the family. Well, and even in that case, uh, Ty, you would want to be doing it with 100% of the people in that neighborhood's agreement. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm saying that those people would create the association. They would create their governing From the uh, ground up. Yep, I get your point. From the ground up, just for that particular purpose, and that would be the scope of that particular association. Sure, and as we've seen, that even though there uh, there was a scope placed on the federal government, it hasn't really worked, the whole Constitution thing. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. Let's go to Nathan. He is in Texas via Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. I really love the voices, guys, but uh, I think Johnson did the best uh, funny voice today. All right, which one was that? Well, you know, when you're trying to imitate, like, a stupid person, and he was oh, saying, Oh, yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think it was the her- jerk or yeah. something. Yeah, sure. It's, yeah. The, it's, it's, it's this, this, the nod to South Park. All right. So what else you got, Nathan? Uh, well, since you're from Florida, I was wondering if you would recognize this. Have you heard of the Julia Tuttle sex offender colony? No. Tell me about it. Yeah, this is uh, what's going on out, outside of, uh, is it Fort Lauderdale? Um, it was actually, uh, Julia Tuttle is a highway in Miami. Okay. Okay. I it was, was going to say, who is Julia Tuttle colony. and what does she have to do with the colony? This poor woman. Well, it was a sex offender colony that existed until 2010. And essentially what happened was the, uh, one of the city uh, officials decided, uh, named Ron Book, decided that he would pass laws or get the cities to pass laws that a sex offender couldn't live within 2,500 feet. Yeah, apparently this also has... Or homeless person. This place also has the nickname of Bookville. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And it was essentially a ghetto okay. or a kind of concentration camp that sex offenders were told they had to go to or or else. Wow. <laughs> or else go back to jail. Well, they couldn't stay anywhere and, else is what you're saying. The, the the rules were prohibiting them from staying in other places. Yeah, because and of, they actually told them, they told them that. They said, you cannot, if you live in this county, you can either go to this freeway or you go to jail. Wow, and man. also moving for somebody who's under probation is, is not the easiest thing in the world. Sometimes you won't get permission to move. Sure. So, um, you know, you can't just pick up and say, you know what? I'm not living under this bridge. Well, sex offender is like almost worse than probation because it goes on forever, right? Indeed. Sex offender yeah, registry. That's, that's the insidious thing about it is that uh, you know they could do this anywhere. If you, what if you leave? To... I mean, can you leave as a sex offender? Can you get out of the United States? We kind of alluded to it earlier tonight, but I I'd sure certainly look to doing it. Yeah, but oh. what you have to consider is is that you can make a lot more money working in the United States than you can if you just decide you're mm-hmm. going to go someplace else. You kind of have to have these things set up. It's uh, it, it's not that easy. So, so apparently, Bookville was featured in the First Blood episode of Dexter. I didn't remember that, but now I now I remember that. Oh scene. yeah, it was in a Dexter episode. <laughs> oh, good show. Thanks, Nathan, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. It has been Ian here with you and Johnson and Mark. Join us tomorrow night online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.78 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,301 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $608. Antiwar.com reports, in addition to the growing death tolls among Ukraine's combatants, both military and rebel, the ongoing eastern conflict is taking a growing toll among civilians as the fighting increasingly relies on artillery. Both sides are armed with aging Soviet-era artillery, and with the fighting taking place largely in cities, the inaccurate nature is putting a lot of civilians in harm's way. At least 30 more civilians were reported killed yesterday, mostly in shellings, particularly in in cities which look to be open-ended battlegrounds like Luhansk, tens of thousands of civilians have fled either westward into Ukraine or eastward into Russia, which is accepting many ethnic Russian refugees from the area. Both sides were quick to blame the other for the civilian deaths, and Ukrainian officials are likely throwing in claims of Russian involvement for good measure, but both seem to be using artillery in equally risky manners, leading to growing international calls to stop relying so heavily on on indiscriminate shelling. The deaths are in addition to 11 people killed in an airstrike against an apartment block earlier this week. The rebels who control the city reported the strike was carried out by a Ukrainian warplane. Ukraine insisted the attack was carried out by some unknown warplane that just happened to be meandering around the Donetsk Oblast. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The LA Times reports, a federal judge ruled Wednesday that California's death penalty violates the U.S. Constitution's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. U.S. District Judge Cormac J. Carney ruled on a petition by death row inmate Ernest Dwayne Jones, who was sentenced to die nearly two decades ago. Carney said the state's death penalty has created long delays and uncertainty for inmates, most of whom will never actually be executed. He noted that more than 900 people have been sentenced to death in California since 1978, but only 13 have actually been executed. Carney wrote, For the rest, the dysfunctional administration of California's death penalty system has resulted and will continue to result in an inordinate and unpredictable period of delay preceding their actual execution. Carney said the delays have created a system in which arbitrary factors, rather than legitimate ones like the nature of the crime or the date of the death sentence, determine whether an individual will actually be executed. In overturning Jones's death sentence, Carney noted that the inmate faced complete uncertainty as to when or 